scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I have a very powerful teaching tonight. I believe that it will bless us as we prepare for what God will be doing um, next week at the October Miracle Service we have a lot of expectations and we know that God will visit us in a mighty way in Jesus name hallelujah one of my one of my passions um, as I teach and open up the body of Christ to the principles of the kingdom one of my passions is to bring believers to an accurate understanding of the principles of the kingdom. Because I have learned both from the word and by experience that our victory in this kingdom is highly dependent on our comprehension of the way the kingdom works. Hallelujah. So it is possible that you can be a Christian. You can be born again. You can even be filled with the Holy Spirit. But then you find yourself innocently walking against the purposes of God for your life. Hallelujah. Many times we see from scripture that this has been a possibility. That men out of ignorance can partner with the devil. To walk against their own life. So, as I attempt to teach um, believers on the principles of the kingdom, I like to bring us to a point where we realize, I've said this again and again, that in the kingdom, the kingdom is made up of systems. And then there are responsibilities. Hallelujah. It's not all up to God. Please listen to me tonight. And it's not all up to you. Meaning that it is a partnership. That's why we call this meeting koinonia. Intimacy and partnership. That if anything will ever be done in this kingdom. And done in your life and destiny. There is going to be a point where you and God will play mutual roles. Are you getting what I'm saying? Come Ken. If I am God and Ken is a man, one who seeks to see the hand of God in his life. If you do not know that you have a role to play, listen please. If you do not know that you have a role to play, you may not know how to align yourself. If this is what he desires, right? And according to the laws of God, I'm supposed to give this to him as God. But if he does not know that he has a responsibility to align to receive it, he can stay for years and while I'm trying to give it to him because of his inability to understand what he should do to walk in the reality of this, he may never have it. Hallelujah. And so there is, there is always a dimension in the kingdom where man must play his responsibility, his role, right? And then there is God's own part. And I found out that God is ever faithful. 
The truth is that many times the problem is never from God's end. The problem is either our not understanding what to do or refusing to do it even when we understand. Hallelujah. So ignorance and disobedience. Two great dangers as far as um, walking with God is concerned. Bless you. And so tonight, I want to share a thought with us very briefly and then we'll pray. I know that God wants to do great things next week. We've had miracle services again and again. And I don't just want it to become one of those miracle services again. I truly believe that if we can align ourselves and know what to do, we can partner with God to bring dramatic breakthroughs to our lives. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. First, Second Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 4 and 5. I'm teaching tonight on pulling down strongholds. Pulling down strongholds. We're going to be examining the concept of strongholds and mindsets. The goal of this brief teaching tonight is to open us up to our own side of the equation. How that many of us probably may be fighting against our own destinies by not knowing that our mindsets and the strongholds that the enemy can pass over our mind can even limit God in our lives. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, chapter 10. From verse 4 to 5. Hallelujah. It's projected so I would like us to read. Let's hurry up. One to read. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of... Stop. The Bible gives us an idea that these strongholds can be pulled down. It says the weapons of our warfare, they are not fleshly, they are not man-made, right? They are not carnal, but they are mighty through God and it can help us to pull down strongholds. Hallelujah. Please write, a stronghold a stronghold is a sustained faulty pattern of thinking based on lies and deception a stronghold is a sustained comma faulty pattern of thinking based on lies and deception a sustained based on lies and deception often enforced by the presence of demon spirits often enforced by the presence of demon spirits are we following tonight praise the lord now i've always talked about this issue of mindsets and patterns because believers have not yet been opened to see the extent of the damage that a wrong mindset can cause to their lives and their destinies. Let me define the word mindset so that we can tie it up together before I begin to teach. I've taught it again and again but I found out that repetition is the key to persuasion. When people keep hearing a thing again and again they suddenly build trust over that thing. What is a mindset? A mindset is an ideology. A mindset is an ideology. It's a value system. A mindset is a way of thinking. And so when we talk about mindsets, we talk about ideologies. Everyone say ideologies. We talk about value systems. Say value systems. Now it is very, very important. Because when God wants to walk with a man, there are a number of challenges that he can face. And one of the greatest, in my opinion, 
is the subject of mindsets and strongholds. I wrote here that when demons fortify a mindset and use it as their gateway into a person's life, the mindset becomes a stronghold. Are you getting that now? I'll take it again. I'm reading it because I want you to write it down. When demons fortify a mindset, an ideology, a thinking pattern, and use it as their gateway into a person's life, that mindset is called a stronghold. That means a stronghold is a mindset that has been crystallized by the presence of demon spirits to ensure that the person consistently thinks that way. One of the things I've learned about mindsets is that mindsets are gates and doors in the spirit realm. Absolutely. Gates and doors that can authorize the entrance of the word of God, of God and, or, and the things of the kingdom or authorize the operations of demons in people's lives. Please follow me very carefully because God wants to set us free. When demons fortify a mindset and they use it as their gateway into a person's life, that mindset becomes a stronghold. See, the Bible tells us not to be ignorant of the devil's devices. The word devices, there is the word stratomai. That means his strategy. The strength of Satan is not in an ability he has in himself. The strength of Satan is the advantage of spiritual knowledge that he knows. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's not like Satan is powerful as a person. His power is based on the advantage that he was the custodian of the revelations of the kingdom. And although he was thrown down, he still has that knowledge. So there are too many pathways that he can navigate in the spirit to get to a man's life. That's what becomes the strength of Satan. Are you following what I'm saying now? So Satan is very, is very smart because he, he has knowledge of different pathways to access a believer's life. And if we do not know how to shut these doors against him, our Christian experience may be barren and we may never truly fulfill destiny. Are we getting blessed? Strongholds. Mindsets. I wrote a few thoughts about mindsets and let's write them down. Mindsets are gates, I've said that, and doorways in the spirit. They permit the operation of the Holy Spirit or the, the operation of demons mindsets they are gates and they are doors in the spirit realm that means when satan freely accesses a man's life there is a stronghold that authorizes his operation in that person's life hallelujah when the holy spirit seems to find expression in a person's life among other things there is also a stronghold a mindset that permits his operation. Number two, a man's life is directly, or the quality, the quality of a man's life is directly tied to his mindset. Absolutely true. Proverbs 23 verse 7. It says, as a man thinketh in his heart, he equates your life to your thought pattern, your mindset. The quality of a man's life, the quality of my life and your life, spiritually, financially, and otherwise, the quality of my life is highly dependent on my mindset. The Bible here says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh, that means that your life revolves around your ideologies. Please, are we learning something tonight? That means... God can never change your life until he does something about your mindset. Your life is the child that your mindset is birthing or has birthed. And it will continue to birth rubbish according to what is inside until there is a change. Another thing I said about mindsets is that 
mindsets define our limits and possibilities in life mindsets define our limits and our possibilities in life Shiva Kato Luke chapter 6 verse 45 Luke chapter 6 verse 45 mindsets define our limits that means your limitation in life is according to your mindset and your possibilities in life are also according to your mindset that's the reason why you can have two people same people but there are possibilities that one may be able to do and the other one may not be able to step in the bible says a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bring it forth what that which is good and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart that which is evil for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks hallelujah we talk a lot about words and the creative power of spoken words but words don't just evolve themselves like that they are products of ideologies men speak according to their perceptions about god about life about themselves about their destinies hallelujah another thing i want you to know about mindsets is that a man's mindset can limit god in his life very serious issue as mighty as god is as great as god is a man's mindset can limit the operation of god in his life psalm 78 verse 41 let's look at something very interesting there the psalmist was writing about the nation of israel with moses psalm 78 verse 41 it's god speaking to anybody it says yeah they turned back and tempted god and they did what they limited the holy one a man can limit god in his life a man can make god look small in his life how did they limit god let's go to verse 19 and 20 Verse 19 and 20 tells us how they limited God. Still the same Psalm 78. Please let's hurry up. I have a lot to talk about and then I want us to pray. There is so much that God wants to do in our lives. Let's read verse 19. Want to read. Yea, they speak against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? So while they were in the wilderness, they said, does God have that? Yes, I know God is mighty. But based on what I know about him, is he that mighty to make a table in the wilderness? Verse 20. Behold, he smote the rock. I've seen that one. I know he did it. And the waters gushed out. And the streams overflowed. But can he give bread also? Yes, I know that he did this. He healed cancer. But can he really heal HIV? Can he provide meat or flesh for the people? Okay, I understand the logic between water and rock. Maybe some scientific things happen and he just took advantage of science. Amazing. The Bible says they limited God. That means God wanted to do many things. He wanted to show his outstretched arm over the nation of israel but their mindsets limited him there are many of us here in this place that if only we could align it would be amazing how far god can stretch his hand upon our lives and do wonders in and through our lives but that one limitation mindsets and over time, that ideology has become prolonged. When demons came, they saw that this mindset is the exact doorway that they need to your life. And they fortified it. You know what it means to fortify it? That means to build a fence around it. To make sure that this becomes your thinking pattern no matter what happens. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
when a man is suffering from a stronghold even when you hear the word of god you bring that word and subject it to your mindset and the activities of these spirits make you to resist the possibility that the word of god offers how are mindsets formed how do we get these mindsets number one culture culture I think it was the school of ministry students or the final year people were talking and then we, we talked on this too. Culture. There are ideologies that we have adopted because of where we are coming from. Our cultural values. Right? And it's not every part of culture that is wrong. But there are certain aspects of culture that are occultic. They are wrong. They are demonic. And we, you know, we grew up knowing it to be the norm. And we have adopted it. When we gave our lives to Christ, we didn't divorce from it. We incorporated it as part of our Christian experience. And so, although we are born again, those mindsets still remain doorways. Is God speaking to anyone tonight? Culture. The influence of culture. We have all kinds of tribes in Nigeria with their history. Is that true? We have people from down south, west, middle belt, north, and all of that. We have people from the extreme north. We have the Yorubas, the Igbos, south, south, Hausa people, middle belters. And all of us have all kinds of history about our culture. Is that true? And can I tell you the truth? The way you are looking at me right now, many of you, you love God, you are born again, but the devil can sing choruses in and out of your life without restraint because there is a part of culture that some of us have refused to let go. There are, it's amazing, as young as we are, there are some of us that your, your, your love and affinity towards culture is very disturbing. As young as you are, when it comes to culture, you behave as if you are 70 years old. It must be done culturally. As young as you are, and you wonder, my goodness, what happened to this person? Hallelujah. Cultural influences. They have defined our perception about God. They have defined our perception about marriage. Is that true? They have defined our perception about ministry. There are all kinds of men of God doing ministry in Nigeria. And when you look at the ministry, you see culture following the ministry too. There are aspects of culture that will never leave because we have allowed it. And for many of us, now there are very positive aspects of culture. Morality, respect, and so on and so forth. But I'm telling you, there are, culture was designed largely to accommodate the operation of demons and spirits. Are you aware of that? And many of us are given that template. And the devil's strategy is this. He says, become a Christian. You can become a Christian. I'm not stopping you. But I want you to go together with that. Take two of them. So you can be praying in tongues while I enter and wreak havoc in your life. Hallelujah. So it is possible to find a Christian right now. The moment there is stomach pain, he just remembers that there's there's one special kind of, of concoction. Now, I'm not just talking about um, your ability to discern trees that heal. That one, you know that there are things that you add to it. So, the, the man of God is born again. But under certain situations. Huh? When you find out that they are not giving you the job. After service, you just call somebody and say, Is there nothing we can do about it? What they are saying is... Ah, Let's go to the other way. Culture. Everybody say culture. Till today, there are many, for instance, many tribes and many territories across Nigeria that part of the rights that lead to marriage are largely occultic and devilish. Are you getting me? In fact, others... They do certain direct devilish things. You know it. You know that this is invoking a spirit to come and guide you. Someone once told me about, I won't mention where the person is from, but then they told me that there is 
a spirit that they invoke when they are about to get married and he goes with the family you understand to make sure that they are protected and this is how our forefathers many of our let me tell you as you are laughing i hope you know that every single tribe tongue nation and territory in this country has contributed our share of permitting demons because of our culture i schooled at a particular place um careful I schooled at a particular place in, in Plateau State and um, they had masquerades. Praise God. Can you still hear me? Are you with me? They had masquerades. And it was said that one of the masquerades that the guy had authority to command bees. Bees. So if you did something wrong and they go and invoke the power of those masquerades, you will just be walking on the street and all of a sudden, you will find out that untold amounts of bees will just come and invade you. And, and the sting, you know that the sting is not just a normal sting of bees because it's occultic. Everybody say culture. There are some of us, for instance, before your parents release you to come to school or do anything, they tell you there is a particular right or cultural right that you must be engaging am i being sincere tonight hallelujah and now for some of us or many of us in innocence we have opened up ourselves and allowed these things to shape our mindsets i know many cultures where when they give birth to children they take the children to all kinds of places and they have some, some kind of fraternity with demonic spirits to protect and, and, and guide the children. And the demons will seemingly protect the children. But then it is at the expense of the destiny of that child. Everyone say culture. Number two. Mindsets are formed. As a result of past experiences. You can put on your phone to just help you as you write. Past experiences. Whether good or bad. Your experiences in life. It has a way of um, creating a mindset in you. I'll give you an instance. A lady who was probably abused growing up. Hallelujah. Maybe molested by a pastor or her relative or somebody. May grow up having a mindset that all men are devils. All men are destructive whether they are born again or not. In fact, there are still some of you sitting down right now. Probably you had three or four or five or more relationships. And maybe most of those relationships are with believers. But then at the end of it, you've had one disappointment or the other. And on the strength of those experiences, you have been able to draw what you call a logical conclusion. That all men are wicked. It's just that some are more wicked than others. All are wicked. You see that? So, when God wants to do great things in your life, something comes to limit you. Everyone say, help me, Lord. Everyone say, help me, Lord. Number three. Your mindset is formed by your level of exposure. Level of exposure. Thank you. I think I'm good. I'm okay. Your level of exposure. That means, now not to insult you, but if you grew up in the village, entirely in the village, you've not had any kind of uh, exposure, you grew up in the village, there are certain possibilities that exist in the village. Right? And you may not know that life can be lived at a higher level. Is that true? So you may be old, but the truth is that there is an ideology that you take along. 
your level of exposure. There are people, for instance, who growing up, they never serve them food in their own plate. You know this kind of communal, these families with many children, especially polygamous families, they now say food is ready. Food is ready means secure your spot. Just find somewhere and sit down. Because whatever is a big, big plate, and wherever you can, if you, if you are strategic enough, good for you for that night. If you are late, bad for you for that night. I follow me now. So, when those kinds of people are growing, it affects their concept of kindness. It affects their concept of generosity. Are you getting me? When you see someone carry a hamper, a Christmas hamper to bless somebody, say, ah, this is too much. Ah! I mean, how can you lavish everything just on one person? Because all through growing up, you shared everything plus your clothes. There was nothing you ever had that you were blessed with and you said, this is my own. Mindset. Hallelujah. There are families, for instance, where father, mother, children all slept in the same room. Correct? Once it's night, everybody secures a very strategic area. Those who put two chairs together, those who put mats outside, huh? those who squeeze and do all kinds of things, mindsets. And so it affects you. Now, while you're laughing, I hope that you are, you are seeing how that mindsets are formed. Your level of exposure. And now, the danger is that if you, you are bankrupt in terms of exposure, if you are not careful when God now begins to expose you, huh, you will push yourself into some unnecessary exposure that will be swinging to the other side of the pendulum. Have you seen people like that? People who you never, you never would have been able to afford a shoe of 1,000. Now you are in a relationship with somebody and he bought you a shoe of 20,000 and said, no, my standard is more than this. You see the other side of the mindset. All your life you use shoe of 1,5, highest. Now you have a shoe of 20, you say, no, 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 no. I suffered growing up. I must make up for this thing. Mindsets. Is God speaking to us? Number four, your association. Mindsets are formed um, based on your association. If you've lived your entire life having wicked people, heartless people, bad brothers who bullied you, beat you up, you went to school, you had seniors who beat you up, bullied you, it creates a sense of complex and inferiority and many things happen to you. Associations. There are many people who became Christians easily because while they were growing up, they were surrounded by genuine people. Look at our little baby now, um, Faith. Our little baby in Koinonia. Imagine how this lady will begin to think. I was having a fixed class with the school of ministry students and then while we were praying, praise God, while we were praying, I watched the little girl. She was praying in tongues and just moving. When they lift their hands, she will lift her hands. Mindset because of our association. That lady at age five or six will think like somebody at age eight because she has been relating with adults. That's how some of you, you are 17, but your mind is, is 41 because all through, you never had a mate. All your mates, you did have mates. Your, the your friends were 10 times older than you. So you joke their joke at their level. So now that you are with your friends, when you talk, they say, ah, bros, how old are you? Mine's, have you seen people like that? Even the way they walk. You see the person walking and you're like, my brother, it's all well. You say, I'm like that, oh, please. Mindsets. There are people when they crack jokes, they crack ancient proverbs. They can't crack anything, anything modern and contemporary. When other people are saying, you know, if wishes were horses, the guy would just come with one kind of thing. Say so when a, this and that happens, and you are looking at it, say, my brother, 
The last time I read this was in one tribal dictionary. Where did you get it? That's all he's known all his life. Everyone say mindset. Your association. You grew up with your grandfather. You grew up with your grandmother. Their possibilities were your possibilities. Their jokes were your joke. You ate what they ate. Now they ask you what's your best food. You mention something nobody knows. Because all through, that, that's what you have been exposed to. Now follow me please. God is taking us somewhere this night. Number five, your family background. Sadly, if you grew up from a poor family, there is something it must have done to you. Must have done to you. No matter how godly or otherwise you are. If you grew up from a very wealthy family, if you grew up from a Christian family, there are some of us that grew up in polygamous families that are mixed. Is that true? Some were believers, some were non-believers. There are some of us that grew up in all kinds of family settings. And these things have created an impression in us. For instance, if you grew up in a polygamous family, based on what you saw growing up, you knew that your mother's side and your stepmother's side, everybody protected their own interest. Is that true? Now you come to ABU and your friends are saying, let's feel free. Say, no, I don't feel free. I, I protect and I guard my thing. And they are saying, no, we are innocent people. They fetch water for you, you refuse to use it to bath. And they say, uh-uh, we're all koinonia. They say, koinonia, wickedness is real. You see, a mindset. You came back and you saw that your roommate fetched your food. You say, God forbid, I will eat again. Because that's what happened probably between your stepmom and your mom. So you just felt that, uh-uh, the moment you are sick, you are suspecting all your roommates. Who is doing this? Somebody in this room, a man's enemies are the people. In your mind, you are talking about your own house. Mindset. To an extent that even when you say God has blessed you with something and they say we rejoice with you, you get angry. Because you are used to it. When they said they rejoice with your mother, that is scattered. So now they say they rejoice with you. You say you rejoice. I'm saying I'm marrying. I'm getting married. And you say you are rejoicing with me. See, mindset. We have had unnecessary enemies because of our mindsets. Family background can influence mindsets. Let's look at one more. Are you getting blessed tonight? Your failure and your limitations in life can build a mindset in you. Failure and limitations in life. You probably wrote jam 10 times before you got admission. Praise God. Or some kinds of things. Maybe you had to write Wayek many times. Or when you were in primary school, you had to repeat. Or secondary school. All these things are mind builders. They create mindsets in us. Now, the danger is this. Please look up. The danger is this. That mindset creates your picture about what you perceive life to be. Are you getting me? The mindsets that you have, they are like, they are like paint brushes. So, they can paint to you a picture of what the world looks like. A picture of what friendship looks like. In fact, a picture of what God looks like. You probably trusted God for something. Trusted God as a family. Nothing happened. And the worst of all happened. And then another one happened. Maybe a tragic event. And then another one happened. And then another one happened. Have you seen parents that when you say, God is faithful, they just say, God? What are you talking about? God? Which God? Where was God when they were driving me out of my house? Where was God when maybe my wife or husband was dying? Have you heard people like that? Where was God when my child was dying of cancer? So because of their failures and their limitations, it has created a mindset about God. So when you sing all these songs about the faithfulness of God 
and you read scriptures like since I was um, young now I am old I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread that man will say the psalmist lied because there is nothing in his life to verify that that is true hallelujah and so you now compose a song with that scripture and the person calls you a liar because he says God there, there are people today that believe in anything that works whether it's God, an idol, because they believe that, look, oh, if you depend on God alone, you will fail. So add whatever works. And that was the whole concept of the Egyptian, Egyptian religion. They had many gods because they believed that gods were limited. So one had a unique grace for, first, for fertility. Another one had grace for um, um, protection. Another one had grace for wisdom and oratory. So they believe that when you serve all of those gods, you will have the complete picture of a good life. Now look at me. Did you realize that your understanding about life today, your understanding about God, and your level of impact and breakthrough in life has largely been limited by your mindset. And for some of us, it's no longer a mindset. It has become a stronghold. Why has it become a stronghold? Because demons saw that mindset. And they saw that this is the exact kind of mindset that permits their operation in an area of your life. So they came and fortified that mindset to make sure that you do not even realize there is a problem with it. Hallelujah. So every time God wants to do great things in your life, those strongholds limit him. God wants to make you prosperous, those strongholds limit him. God wants to heal and bless you, those strongholds limit him. God wants to take you from glory to glory. Those strongholds limit him. God wants to give you a good husband, a good wife, a good job. God wants you to excel and break limits, but those mindsets limit him. There are many people who may never enjoy a good home because there are poisonous strongholds that they have about, about fatherhood, motherhood, parenting, and so on and so forth. There are some of us right now, we don't have any friend in our lives. The truth is there are no friends. All the friends that we have are just our regular church people who just, just because of our connection. But we don't have destiny friends. And the reason is our mindset. There are some of us, you fight with everybody you come across with. Once you are friends with the person, after two weeks, you are already fighting. Something about your mindset keeps telling you that everybody hates you. Hallelujah. There are some of us who have settled down and we have believed that we will never amount to anything in life. Why? Because family background, culture, everyone in your family was a failure. The richest man in your family was a carpenter. And he probably had a bike. That's it. So it's a mindset. Out of the 20 or 30 people in your extended family, nobody has risen past secondary school. A mindset. And you have accepted it. So even when you push through to, to get a degree, you say, even if I don't get a job, I've tried. After all, I'm better than these ones that stopped there. Whereas God wants to take you to the nations. Everyone shout, change my mindset, oh Lord. Shout it one more time. Change my mindset, oh Lord. Let me tell you something. One of the greatest deliverance that can happen to a man is not just that demons are casted out, but that, that there is a change, a reconfiguration of your mindset such that you authorize heaven to now begin to carry out only the things that are consistent with the word of God in your, in your life. I 
I look at people, I've had the privilege of traveling to many places in this country. And when I travel, I like studying the culture and the ideology of the people. And oftentimes when we travel, if we are spending more than a day or two, they usually take us on a tour around the major areas of the city. They show us different things and all of that. And I have been amazed. I have been shocked and sometimes surprised at the ideologies that can be across a territory. Let me give you one. Um, in 2007, when I was in Port Harcourt, when I got there for the first two or three weeks, I was laughing every day. And the reason was because I have never seen that a man can be angry and slap your car. Are you getting that now? I mean, you push somebody and he's angry and then he slaps your car. Boom! The metal. Oh. And to him, he believes that that slap is supposed to have gotten to you. I said, my goodness. You slap a metal, your hand is paining you, the person in front does not realize and is supposed to be a communication of your pain. Same mindset. Number two, Lagos. I have always wondered how a man will rush and hurry his life like that. I mean, you hurry your life almost enjoying yourself. You are trying to drop, trying to climb. And in the midst of the car, there's someone preaching. Praise the Lord. Oh, single, single. And somebody's dropping. And they're hurrying up. And I'm wondering, my goodness, a combination of spirituality and foolishness coexisting? Mindsets. Hallelujah. I went to a particular region in this country and I found out that it was the women that were on bike. As in bike, as in bike machine. My goodness. Yes, the ladies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies on bike. And I said, where are the men? How can a man buy bike and give his wife and say, you know, go and farm or do whatever with it. Mindsets. Could it be that there are certain things that God has wanted to achieve in your life this year, 2014, but up till now, your mindset has refused to give him entrance? Can I tell you something? Before we blame Satan over everything, I am telling you now that Satan is not so powerful. The strength of Satan is the ability to build strongholds around your mindset. Is God blessing us? That's why you find out that there are people. Have you seen people you pray over their situation and nothing happens? Because the truth is their mindset opposes that prayer. The Bible says that we can pull down these strongholds. We can pull down these strongholds. There are many people who demons have been casted out of them. Yet, their situations did not change. See that? It's not all about demons. There are strongholds that are resident within our minds. And tonight, God will grant us grace to deal with it. How do you pull down these strongholds? Let's look at it quickly. How do you pull down these strongholds? Seeing that they are destructive. Man of God, could it be that there is more God can do with your life and ministry? But your mindset, your mindset. I was teaching the school of ministry and I told them, the ministry students, I told them, I said, think world class. Think world class. You can start from Jerusalem, but don't die in Jerusalem. Jesus, listen, listen. They said this about Jesus. Nathaniel said in John chapter 1, he said, can anything good come out of where? 
Let me, let me talk to you a bit before we talk about how to pull down strongholds. Let me tell you how familiar spirits operate. You know, have you heard about familiar spirits? Do you know how they operate? Let me tell you. A familiar spirit, right, is, is a spirit or there are groups of spirits that have dwelt across a region for a very long time. They have studied the vulnerabilities of the people and built strongholds from their vulnerability. Are you getting what I'm saying? They have, they have over hundreds and probably thousands of years dwelt in a region. That's why they are called familiar. They understand everything about the lineage. They understand everything about that territory. And they have been able to study patterns. And they have found the best pattern that they can create a door out of. That's the reason why you find out that many territories have certain limitations. Is that true? There are tribes that their own, their own um, unbecoming is immorality. Is that true? There are tribes that their own is hatred. There are tribes that their own is anger. There are tribes that the men are careless. Is that true? Generally careless. Born again or not born again. The men are just careless. There are tribes and territories where in almost any, every family, you must find one or two daughters that um, may have a child before marriage. Is that true? There are other families that you, out of 10 people, you may find only one that can sustain their marriage. Familiar spirits. They build strongholds across the vulnerabilities of territories and they use it as their entrance. So, the man of God may be in ministry, but he has not dealt with these areas and he thinks it does not matter. And he finds out that although he's in ministry, that anger that surrounded his territory is still affecting him in ministry and there are many doors god will send partner to the ministries he will drive them out because of anger are you seeing that now how do you pull down these strongholds number one you must first recognize and admit the need to take on a renewed godly mindset you will never never receive the help of god if you do not recognize and admit that you need help there are many arrogant people with messed up mindsets who will never accept that something is wrong with their ideologies the first step to your deliverance hear me brothers and sisters is not that hands are laid on you is that you come to a point where you think about your life and look at me in the next one minute i like everybody under the sound of my voice think about your life is this the best if you don't come to a point where you think about your life you may die in that level forever think about your life why am i behaving the way i always behave why have i attracted all kinds of woes into my life is this the best of my destiny why is it that every man that comes into my life in two weeks, he will go away? Leave the issue of demons. They gave you a job. After two weeks, you fought with your superiors. They drove you. You went to another place. After two weeks, you fought with your superiors. The third one, the day they gave you the job, you slapped your boss. They said this way, out, never come back again. Something is wrong. Some of us, our mindsets have driven all our destiny helpers. All. There are some of us, our mindset about money has kept us poor and will keep us poor forever. God will bless you with 10,000 naira. You carry all of that 10,000 naira. No tithing, no giving. You carry it and go and eat in a restaurant. You call your friends. Let's come and enjoy ourselves. Mindset. Because you think your respect and honor is based on the money you have and that's what you got probably from culture are you getting my point now so you think that you will be well respected and you go out of your way make money only to carry it and spend it your concept of making money is to have something to spend because the more you spend the more you are respected mindsets so you see a man who is working and earning two hundred and fifty thousand, but you will go to the village 
for Christmas or New Year at the end of the year and blow three million naira trying to impress people and come back broke and sell one of his car only to begin the hard work again after 40 years of working he has not been able to do anything and live for his children everybody say mindset there are some of us we have mindsets and we believe through those mindsets that we can never do anything on our own and that's the basis for your doing malpractice you are born again you are every even this exam now some of you it has started some of you to start there is a a predetermination already malpractice i must do it it's just that it will not be as great as the last one at least i'll be here but i must do it for some of you i will look for chokes but if they bring it i will refuse mindsets have you not heard of parents organizing waek huh waek and jam and flogging their children for not receiving the chokes mindsets because they think that no matter what will happen, let the child just move forward. Their ego is at stake. And they don't care whether the child is understanding or he's moving legitimately or not. When we come into the kingdom, one of the primary ministries of the Holy Spirit is begin to expose us to a point where we realize that the mindsets we have at the moment is not sufficient to take us to the place where God wants to take us. How many of you can admit tonight that I, I want to take responsibility? Some of you, you have been blaming everybody from your father to your mother. You are blaming everybody. You are now blaming your friend. You are now blaming everybody. You will take that bad attitude and blame your husband and your wife. When children come, it will now be children. How many of us tonight can say, I take responsibility. My mindset needs upgrading. There's no denying it. See, let me tell you, when you come before God, you must be like a child. You must allow yourself. It's not your fault. Some of us, that's the reality you lived with all your life. Now God is challenging you. There are two groups of people in this place tonight. Those who will argue it and throw away what I'm saying. And allow the devil to keep fortifying that mindset. And after 20, 30, 40 years, you'll find out that nothing has moved. I found out that time does not change things. New decisions bring new changes in life. For 38 years, a man was lying down at a pool called Bethesda. But in less than 5 minutes, when he did something differently from a renewed mindset. You know his problem? Anger and bitterness. Jesus said, what will I do for you? He said, no, every time I want to do this, all these people, and Jesus said, that's not the issue. That's not the issue. You have refused to move forward because you think your friend married the man who will be your husband. Ten years, they've given birth to five children. You are still there angry. They cannot even remember the events that happened. Say, in this life, there are some people, even in heaven, blah, 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 keep talking. They are moving. You are there dying. The devil has crystallized a mindset of hatred. There are some of us that hate our parents. It's true that they treated you bad. But you know that you must honor your parents for your days to be long. And now God is telling you let go. So that you can take on something new. Me, God forbid. Mindsets. God wants to take us to new levels. Brothers and sisters, there is no telling how far God is going to take you. Look at Joseph. Joseph had a dream, a great dream, to be a great man in life and destiny. He shared the dream with his brothers and he paid dearly for it. After many years, he now became the prime minister in Egypt and his brothers came. He would have been angry to hold on to that resentment. The Bible says a merry heart doeth good like medicine. But a broken spirit who can bear. There are some of us right now. God is speaking to you. There is a lot of forgiveness for you to do. If you must rise up. You are angry with everybody. Now you, are, you have joined the group. You, you are now angry with yourself. Everybody you are angry with has moved forward. Only you. 
now you're angry with yourself for being angry with everybody. I, I don't even like life. Let me even die. You see, that's the point. But tonight, you are hearing the word of the Lord. It's time to lay that mindset down. Some of us, you've been carrying your village on your head and it has been punishing you for decades. It's now time to drop that thing and say it's true. I am from so, so, so place, but I'm an ambassador of the kingdom. I need to change. Many of us have mindsets about money, mindsets about marriage, mindsets about God, mindsets about everything. Some of us, because of our mindsets, you don't apologize. Because your mindset interprets apology as being cheap. So when you need to say, I'm sorry, you say, over my dead body, I'm sorry, would have saved many people. Money, time, opportunities have been lost. Say, the way I am, I don't tell anybody I'm sorry. I don't look for anybody's thing. I don't care. And God is saying, apologize. Say, for what? Mindset. Who knows, maybe there are still some people here. You come for koinonia, but you don't talk to one another. I can't apologize. There are some of us, mindsets have brought self-centeredness. Let everyone go to hell for as long as I'm doing well. It must benefit me first. When I'm satisfied, I now turn and I say, who is there? I had to change a lot of things. Oh my goodness. I had terrible mindsets. When I started working with God, I had gotten some of these mindsets from my upbringing. I got these mindsets from my failures of the past. I got these mindsets, but I knew that where God was taking me to. See, you cannot give God your terms for greatness. You must subscribe to his terms. Many of us want to be great, but you want to be great at your terms. You say, Lord, these are my conditions. If you can bend to my little mold, that's your cup of tea. And God says, I am God. Do you know that something that has never been done in your family, you can be the first? But the question is, are you like the nation of Israel that has limited God? Sister, who told you God cannot use women? Who told you there cannot be women billionaires in your family? Everyone has suffered. You are planning to go and join them. I know one of our ladies in this place. They have a mindset in their family. She comes from a background where if you go to secondary school, just from a little, they just drag you and say, go and marry. You know there are backgrounds like that. They say you have tried. JS3 or SS1, that's good enough. Go and marry. And I know the lady and I've, I've honored her resilience. This lady has gone through all kinds of pressure from family that she should go and marry. And the lady said, I want to go to the university. There's much that God wants to do. They made arrangement of one man for her. And they were trying to cajole her to go home so that he would pin her down. They would marry and she refused. Let me tell you, breaking out of a mindset is difficult. You will be misunderstood. Because you are breaking status quo. Some of you, when you want to do something, your parents say every end of the year, there is something we bow to. And you say, Daddy, I love you and I respect everyone, but I'm tired. I'm now a child of God. Your father will say, how old do you think you are? I bow to this thing to pay your school fees. Why didn't you reject the school fees? I bow to this thing to buy the Bible that you are using. You better go and bow. But who tonight will be able to say, Lord, I recognize a need for a change of mindset. Oh, brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. If you break that barrier between you and your destiny, you will fly on the wings of eagles. I don't care how bad things are right now. It doesn't take time. It only takes you cooperating with the Lord. Say, Lord, in my village, nobody has done this. In my family, nobody has done this. But right now, I make up my mind to partner with the Holy Spirit. You may be one in a million, but you must be the first to stand up.
and arise and say, I'm going to break this status quo. This status quo of witchcraft. Everybody in your family has died at 30. You will need to change your mindset and say, no way. No way. My father's elder brother died at a particular age. My father's younger brother died at a particular age. When he was getting to that point, thank God that we had had some spiritual knowledge and we prayed and we labored in the spirit. My father would have died in a miserable way. How to pull down strongholds. Number one, you must recognize and admit that you need a renewed godly mindset. You must. Every man that saw the mercy of God in his life had to come to a place where he broke down and humbled himself. God does not help arrogant people. If there is one thing that God does is to oppose the proud. There are many of us probably for the first time in your life. Today will be your, the first time your pride will be broken. To say, Lord, finally, finally, I get down on my knees and I accept that my wrong mindset is the reason why I'm poor and broke. My wrong mindset may be the reason why I am not married. My wrong mindset is the reason why my ministry may not be growing. My wrong mindset may be the reason. See, if you break down, let it sting your ego and let it go and let God step into your life. You will never, I'm telling you this, you will never get the attention of God with the arrogant nature that many of us have. God, if you are available, please come down. I think uh, I may need you one or two areas. God is not like that. If my people who are called by my name, the first thing that happens is they shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and then turn, repent, turn from their wicked ways. He said, then, not before, not during, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their lives. The hand of the Lord is not too short over our destinies. Many of us need to get to that point of humility tonight. I know you are a great evangelist, bishop, pastor, but tonight break down your pride and say, Lord, I ask for mercy. There is something up here that is permitting the devil to wreck my life. I had to come to a point in my life where I said, Lord, don't let me be a fool forever. Search my heart. Try my thoughts. All the mindsets that authorize demonic activities in my life. Take it away. I'm willing to pay whatever price. Who is ready to make that decision tonight? Oh, that's where it starts from. That's where it starts from. That's where it starts from. Nothing will ever change in your life. Nothing will ever change in your destiny. Stop blaming people. Stop blaming your father. Some of us are angry at where we are coming from. I wish I didn't come. Well, you are from there now. So you can as well calm down. You're already hoping that you will soon change your indigent certificate. That's not the issue. Indigent certificate will not change your destiny. When your mindset changes. Some of us have disowned our parents because they represent pictures of such failure you don't want to be associated. The day you look at your you have been telling everybody that your father is your uncle. It's time to tell the truth. Some of us have lied that our parents are abroad. They are not abroad. It's time to tell the truth. That man is my father. He may not have done well but I will rise. What he could not eat, I will give him. Where he could not go, I will bring him. All this life of falsehood and lies and a fake impression of success will destroy us. We have to come to a point where we admit 
that there is something about our mindset for some of us it has become strongholds you betray everybody that comes close to you it's an attitude it has never been an issue you are a loving person you love God but you betray you are not trustworthy at all any information they tell you is the same thing as telling a radio station it's just like they took it to FM and said let just tell the whole and you are very happy you are a pretty lady but that's your own becoming every guy that comes after two weeks he just does as if he's going to come back and disappears because every time they see that thing the Bible says Naaman was the captain of the army of Syria second Kings 5 he said but we must deal with the bots in our lives tonight and if you are unwilling to take responsibility let me guarantee you you will never see the hand of God number one Lord I recognize I admit that the quality of my life today is dependent on my decisions which have been products of my mindset I may not have seen things accurately but right now I ask you to help me number two number two how to pull down strongholds after admitting this number two is casting out the demons that keep the faulty mindset you must cast out those spirits that keep those mindsets because when a mindset has become a stronghold a demon spirit is involved you will never enter a man's house and spoil the goods until you bind the strong man and casting out demons there involves number one destroying their legal hold over your life the realm of the spirit is a legal realm please listen to me all these demon spirits and these principalities that leech over our destinies they do it on legal basis and the bible says and they overcame them by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimonies that's where we talk of covenants and curses and yokes that cast spells over people's minds control their mindsets you must cast those demons you must cast those devils and if you think there is no spirit to cast out you are joking you are joking big time there are wicked spirits that leech and become strongholds so every time god wants to step into your life they build fortifications they have kept families poor they have kept many people downcast You must break their legal hold. It's not enough to cast out devils. That which gives them a legitimate ground on your life must be dealt with. And the blood is the mystery that solves that. Because the blood is a price in the spirit. The highest price. The price that can open any door. second corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 are we getting blessed tonight we're getting into the heart of the matter now please let me have your attention let my life be the temple of your spirit let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace Let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell. Oh Lord, I want to know your glory. I want to offer a 
sacrifice of praise. So fill this temple, Lord, with your Bible says in whom the God of this world are you seeing that there are spirits involved blinded their minds he did something it's an enchantment over your mind it's a spell that controls your mind no matter what you are told and that's what authorizes demons you sleep in the night and there are all kinds of spirits coming to molest you you go on prayer and fasting and in the middle of the prayer and fasting is still happening there is a legal hold. It's not just in Jesus' name, go. I'm telling you, listen to me. Oh, yes. Whenever something good is about coming into your life, a man or a woman or a snake or a serpent or something, these are mysteries in the spirit. Demons don't find pleasure in anything. They, it's, 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 a, it's a mystery, it's a code in the spirit that activates the operation of failure. Some of you, is during exam, certain strange things happen to you. Enchantments. Mindsets that have been blinded by demonic activities. And you want to rise. Every time you want to rise, all they need to do is touch those codes and it brings you back. You want to stop the clubbing. You want to stop all of those things. The day you make that determination, a strange mystery happens in your life and it reduces you back. You are in a dirty relationship that is ungodly. You pray and you make a vow and say, I'm going to send a text to this brother and say, enough is enough. I'm ready to move forward. And these mysteries are activated again. And you who said you will stop, you will now call him and carry your two legs and go to his house. But mindset. He said in whom the God and to make matters worse you truly have a stronghold when they are talking to you and you do not even see the need for change. Have you seen people like that? That's the classic example. There are people that can be sitting. You are talking to them and to you it's supposed to be very clear that this rubbish they are doing is not taking them anywhere. And they look at you when you finish they just laugh. There are people like that. They will escort you for koinonia and come and leave you here. They'll say to bros, tomorrow now, it will be. And they turn back and you are wondering. And powerful worship is going on. In whom the God of this world, the God of this system has what? Blinded their minds. It's like a, it's not just blinded like, um, it's a spell. That's why some of our parents, can be doing the things they are doing mindset god will bless them they will carry the money and be giving the children of rich people and you are dying in your house not even a rapper for your mother they've not paid your school fees and when you talk to them they don't even see the need to change they say i know what i'm doing the god of this world has blinded their minds you must cast out the demons that fortify these mindsets and make them strongholds. Number three, when that happens, then you engage in what the Bible calls the renewal of the mind. The renewal of the mind is useless until there is first an admittance until the spirits that are responsible for holding this mindset are casted out. Then you are now released. Now look up, please. This is the problem with many deliverance ministries in Nigeria. Listen to me. You think God is calling into the deliverance ministry? Just listen to me before you add to this confusion that we have in this country. Many people fulfill the first condition. Yes, I think something is wrong. Something is moving in my body. Huh? Or I have repeated cycle of failure. Now you go to a man of God. Step one. Step two, you believe the demons are casted out. But number three, there is no renewal. And the Bible tells us the mystery of demonic operations. When a spirit leaves a man, huh, 
it goes through arid regions, dry places, seeking for a place of habitation and not finding any. This is what the demon will tell the man. He said, I will arise and go back to my house. He's still calling the man his house. And then he returns back and the Bible says he finds the place swept, clean, but empty. Swept, clean, but empty. And when the demon sees that is still the old mindset that is there, he now gathers seven other demons greater than itself and says, let's build a fortification. And you find out that the man's latter state is even worse. That's why you can see that a man can be delivered. Two months, he may get some level of breakthrough. And after three or four months, he gets back not even square one, square zero. And then we keep blaming a lot of men of God and saying, that's, that means that my man, my man is not genuine. That deliverance is not true. We have a responsibility. The renewing of your mind. What does it mean to renew your mind? It means to passionately pursue. To know God's perspective about life. To renew your mind means to seek to understand the principles of the kingdom as revealed by the word of God. I take it again. The renewal of the mind means to passionately seek to know God's perspective about life. That's what I call wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to know God's perspective about everything. And then to seek to understand the principles of the kingdom as revealed in the word of God. Romans chapter 2 verse 2. It says, Be not conformed to this world. The Greek word is aeon. The thinking pattern, the mindset that comes with this system. There is an ideology that comes with this system. It said, Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. You're not there yet? By the renewing of your mind. He said that ye may prove that which is um, good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. So how do you get transformed? By the renewing of your mind. That means there are things I've been doing that is probably keeping me poor. I've not been tithing. I've not been giving. I walk in a life of selfishness and materialism and self-centeredness. All of a sudden, those spirits and demons of poverty have leached through that mindset and created a stronghold out of it. Now I come and I make up my mind to want to enjoy the blessings of the Lord. And when I'm delivered from the operation of those demons, then I now begin to adopt heaven's ideology. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom? And so on and so forth. And then, the moment there is that renewal, Satan comes and he cannot find his doorway to your life again. At that point, your liberty becomes permanent. Deliverance is never complete until it is backed up by a process of transformation. That's why people, people who get delivered and are not channeled to sit under a heavy teaching anointing where the principles of the kingdom are taught will go back, I guarantee you, back into what they were delivered from. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 it says let this mind be in you let this mindset permit this mindset to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus when Jesus walked the earth he had a mindset there was a mindset that made the waves and the, and the seas 
obey him. There was a mindset that made the Holy Spirit comfortable living in him. There was a mindset that made his enemies not to be able to resist nor can say his words. There was a mindset that helped, that made him to fulfill his assignment. And the Bible says, let this mind permit it to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And the instrument to get that, that mindset into you is the word of God. The word of God accurately taught and accurately explained. Number four, how to pull down strongholds. Number four, you need to take steps and make new decisions that are consistent with this renewed godly mindset. You need to now take steps and start making new decisions that are consistent with this renewed godly mindset. Your life became a disaster because you were taking steps based on a mindset that was ungodly. Now that you have paid the price to adopt a new mindset, start taking steps based on that new mindset. And you find out that your life will start changing. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 8. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are pure, hallelujah, it begins to list certain things and it tells you, think on these things. Let your mindset say, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Allow these things to frame your mindset so that your decision will now become true, honest, just, pure decisions. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 2. We looked at that, but let's look at it again. I announce to somebody tonight that the devil is a liar over your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2 verse 2. Please read together. I want to read. The apostle is speaking. He said, fulfill my joy that ye be like-minded. There is a mindset that I propose to you. This is my admonishment. Please be like-minded. Don't have a different mindset. There is a, a mindset that made the Holy Spirit work mightily in me. He said, be like-minded. Be like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Brothers and sisters, your destiny is at the mercy of of your mindset your destiny is at the mercy of your mindset the quality of your home is at the mercy of your mindset the excellency of your spiritual life is at the mercy of your mindset The quality of your finance or your level of finance is at the mercy of your mindset. Your level of greatness in life, among other factors, is at the mercy of your mindset. He leads me and guides me to the city of a he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me 
to my place of destiny. Listen, God wants to take you far, but are you ready to hold on to his hands tonight and say, Lord, if it means me dropping certain devilish aspects of culture, it drops tonight. If it means me dropping certain aspects of my past, it will drop tonight. Listen, let me tell you something about your past. If your past does not inspire you, dump it. Dump it. Dump it. There is no reason to meditate and think about a past. I don't care what you have done. If your past does not inspire you, pack it up this night and throw it out of your life. Oh, holy God, I know you will not fail. Oh, holy God, oh, holy God, I know you will. Listen, as far as God is concerned, you can count on him. God is dependable. God is reliable. His part of the equation is guaranteed. But the question is, are you ready to hold on to his hand? There are many of you that need to leave the hands of culture tonight. There are many of us that need to leave the hands of family backgrounds. An association, listen to me, love is a command, association is not. If you need to pack up from some devilish associations that will not take you to the place of destiny, I don't care how long they have been your friends, separate from them. Abraham had to leave the servants because he was going to climb a mountain. Do you realize that there is a place in destiny? God is dependable. God is reliable. Are you not tired of that habit? You have prayed and prayed and prayed. It's not just the issue of prayer. It's the issue of alignment. Alignment. Your anger has destroyed too many opportunities in your life. It's time to think about it. Your self-centeredness has destroyed too many open doors. Your hatred and resentment is a stronghold. Your affinity for immorality has wrecked more havoc in your life than you can imagine. But tonight, before we talk about demons, are you prepared? My job tonight is to bring you to a point where you see the need to embrace a new ideology. A little boy born in the States called Gray Farah is now a motivational speaker, multi-millionaire. At a very young age, was born by an African-American. Could not amount to anything. The family was poor. The gentleman was poor. But he made a decision to break status quo. And he started painting stones. Very tender age. He started painting stones and giving people to cover to put on their books and people were laughing at him he went from door to door because he knew that he had a prophetic destiny to bring his family out of the financial misery hallelujah eventually at age 12 that young boy became a multi-millionaire at age 14 he was sitting on the board of over 10 companies at age 20 he was given two honorary phds he's 29 right now and is one of the most influential black millionaires in america men who decided to cooperate with destiny listen no matter what is happening in your life you are not the first to go through it you can't sit down and keep regretting Forget about what has happened. The Bible says, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I press. Some of us have meditated too much about yesterday. God gave you the gift of today and tomorrow to remedy the mistakes of yesterday. Every time you wake up to a new day, 
is God's gift to you that there is still hope for your life. We used to sing a song. Whenever I see another breaking of day, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whenever I see another breaking of day, I say thank you. The relationship failed since last year but till now you have not moved forward you've used one year to regret whereas you would have gotten married you would have even been pregnant now one year to regret and the person that messed up your life has settled down he's even born again now maybe he's a pastor and you are there dying listen Two wrongs don't make a right. It doesn't matter what has happened. Retrace your steps now. Some of you played around with certain opportunities that God gave you. Accept tonight that it was because there was a mindset. Allow the Lord to adjust it and be ready to move forward. The Lord is going to be doing great things next week. But it's not enough. There are many of us. We've been coming for miracle service after miracle service. But every time the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon your life, there is a stronghold that frustrates his activity in your life. So it looks like your situation is so difficult, God cannot break through. It's not true. We have three prayer points tonight. The first prayer point is is a cry before God truly I trust that God will grant us grace to admit tonight and take responsibility for the way our lives have been for those of us who are experts at blaming people forget about it take responsibility it's like saying you are better today than you were yesterday he leads me and guides me to the city of above he leads me and guides Come on, join us if you can sing. To the place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place Hallelujah. of destiny. This song is a prophetic song. Listen, as you raise this song, I like you to wave goodbye to the past. We are going to start by dealing with the past. I don't care what went right or wrong. 2013, 2000 and whatever is gone. As you raise this song, I like you to announce to your destiny that you are still coming. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Hallelujah. We are going to sing this song and I like you to sing it from the depths of your heart. That he's leading you. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads Go ahead. Goodbye to the failures of yesterday. Goodbye to the failures of yesterday. This one thing I do. Forgetting the past, forgetting the past, forgetting the past, forgetting the past. I said to us, I pressed to us, forget about the past. Sing it as a prophecy over your life. He leads me, he leads me, and guides me to the city of above. He leads me. The voices sing it as a prophecy. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my 
my place of destiny. Listen. There was a man in the Bible called Saul of Tarsus. The Bible tells us that that guy had a mindset based on his ideology. He thought killing believers was a way to please God. But on his way to Damascus, he encountered a light. When he encountered the light, something happened to him. He did not sit down regretting and crying. He turned and he knew that he had a great destiny. When Stephen was being martyred, Paul, Saul then was seated and they placed their garments close to him. There was an idol worshiper called Abraham. Hallelujah. And he belonged to a land called all of the Chaldeans. He was an idol worshiper. His father had taught him idol worship. Listen, listen to me. Do you realize that Abraham was not supposed to be the father of faith? That prophetic destiny belonged to his father. Read your Bible. His father failed and he refused to align himself. And God called Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, the first person God called was his father. And then God called him and said, Abraham, he said, come out. That's our first prayer point. Come out of your father's house. Come out of every failure. Come out of every regret. You will never be able to open up yourself for new things when you're still sitting to regret the past. Now I'd like you to lift your voice and I'd like you to prophesy and say the past is gone. The past is gone. The past is gone. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead, pray. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, forgetting the things that are behind, forgetting the failures that are behind. Please pray. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. To the city of above, He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Hallelujah. look up the bible says if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves the next prayer point is a prayer point of sincere humility and brokenness to say lord i take responsibility something about my mindset authorized the devil into my life and i take responsibility and i ask for mercy tonight lift your voice and pray cry out for mercy there's nothing to be embarrassed about it go ahead and pray please pray inside and outside this is for your destiny Pray. Pray. I ask for mercy. I ask for mercy. Lord, I ask for mercy. There is a mindset my family has that has authorized witchcraft that has authorized limitations
limitations. There is a mindset I have that has made me a recurrent failure. Tonight, I take responsibility. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I live to praise your name. And I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I live, I live to praise your name. You can't keep being afraid of your destiny. There is a certainty. There is an assurance. I live, I live, I live. I live to praise your name. Though your beginning be small, but your latter end shall be great. Prophesy. going to pray. Listen. Hold on. The next prayer point is going to be very strategic because some of you will be delivered here right now. Hallelujah. You're going to command every devil and every spirit that has had access to leech onto your mindset and authorize hell. You're going to pray and say in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus I command your hold over my mind to be lifted. Lift up your voice and pray. Come on, pray Koinonia. Strongholds. We command spirits. We command forces. Demon spirits, demon spirits that are being responsible, demon spirits that are being responsible for God pattern, demon spirits that are being responsible for God pattern. Pray. He must let you go tonight. Come on, pray. I no longer need you in my life. Spirits responsible for crystallizing mindsets and God patterns. They made my family poor. They made failures out of my family. No way. I arise to change. I arise to change things. Lift up your hands as I challenge those devils of darkness they must let you go there are spirits that have held on I tell you I see a lot of it as I stand on stage here but they must go right now the time is up it's a new season in the name of the Lord Jesus whose I am and whom I serve I decree and I declare 
that anyone under the sound of my voice who has been a victim of demonic forces, spells, yokes that have crystallized thought patterns that authorize Satan in your life in the name of Jesus and at the count of three let the fire man take it out let the fire of the Holy Ghost visit such a one and that those spirits must go I invoke it in the realm of the spirit right now at the count of three I like you to shout that name that is above all names listen listen I'm already seeing in the spirit there will be dramatic deliverances right now dramatic some of you you will feel fire from your hands and your head fire literally literally it must give way right now are you ready now at the count of three i invoke the powers of the heavens and i decree and i declare that every spirit that is responsible for wrong thought patterns at the count of three may it live your life now are you ready one two three I command those devils out, out, out. I command foul spirits. Inside and outside, I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let no spirit stand this fire. Let no devil stand this fire. Let no enchantment. I provoke that in the name of Jesus, every enchantment, every mystery that is responsible for casting spells and invocations over your mind to trap you in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of God land upon your destiny. Hallelujah. Lift your hands one more time. There is no hiding. I like you to lay your hands on your head. That's the instruction the Lord gives me. I tell you, something will happen to some of you right now that will surprise you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let those hands on your head become hands of fire. And I declare that every power, every power, that is resting upon your mind and destiny as you shout that name Jesus let that fire bring freedom to you right now are you ready one two three oh break it I break courses I break courses I break courses I break jinxes. I command spells. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Every altar, I don't care where it is, whether in your village, wherever, that is servicing any enchantment, any altar, Makoto Parade, Dekete Prokota, that has taken any sacrifice that puts you in bondage right now. At the count of three, I command those altars to burn into pieces and that you be released. One, two, three, be free now. I command those altars they burn with fire they burn with fire oh you must be free tonight you must be free it's time to rise to a new season hallelujah strongholds 
that keep mighty men to remain weak in life strongholds you would have gone to school for years but it made sure you never pass jam it works for everybody until it comes to your turn then you make a foolish decision you don't even know why you said what you said and it closes the door to you going to sing this song I see a river flowing in the spirit this is what I see in the spirit fresh water and I believe that this is bringing freshness to many people thou O Lord art a shield for me give it your best as we sing that song prophesy it as your song of exodus out of certain nonsense he said, my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. He said, and I shall be anointed. Let me tell you something. If you are not tired of failure in your life, you can go. But for as many who are saying, Lord, this is it. I am sick and tired. This year must not finish with my life like this. I'd like you to sing this song from the depths of your heart. Thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My Lord, I want the wings that trouble me. Many are they that rise up against me. Many are they which say of my soul. But your prophecy tonight is that you, O oh Lord, but thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for, for me. You're my glory. showing me something. I'm seeing a mask. A mask like the face of, of an idol or something. And there is a particular family I'm seeing that worships that thing. It's, it's, it's currently in your house. I don't know if it's in the village or somewhere, but I'm seeing a mask. A mask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whichever family this word is for, I command that power to lose its hold over your life now. I command that power to lose its hold over your life now. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to minister to a lady. We still have miracle service, but um men die in your family in fact right now there are only about one or two that are left from what the lord is showing me men whether they get married or whatever they just die mysteriously please who is that i'm just led to pray for the person my glory lift her up on my head My 
my glory. Hold your hands, both of you. Okay, you're part of it. Come, hold your hands. Please make sure you understand the word. Don't just be emotional about it. I see mysterious death. Men, not women. Men, men, men. Hallelujah. Look at me. The Bible says for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, that he may annihilate the works of darkness for this purpose. I'm going to pray for you. You are representing your families, but the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. And that curse must be broken. It must be broken. For many of you, they are covenants, ordinances of darkness. It's time for your destiny to go. Lift those hands. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your fire. Let fire fall. Not just upon them. But upon the foundations of those families. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As I lay my hands upon you. I command that those things are broken. Broken, 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 broken in the name of Jesus, 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 broken because out, out of her. I command, I see a spirit, I see a man wearing a red skirt. I'm seeing a man wearing a red skirt. In the name of Jesus, release her destiny now. Now, 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 now. Broken, broken, broken. I cause altars. There is a cause in this family. There is a cause in our family. I set fire upon those altars of darkness. I release everyone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Those altars in Cameroon. I command fire. Upon those altars of witchcraft. That ties your success and your progress. Who? Let her come. Have I prayed for her? I pray for you. Hallelujah. I prophesy to you that this evil ends. This plague of death ends in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It ends in the name of Jesus Christ. You are soon rounding up. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Go back to your seat. I would have done this next week. But the Lord is ministering to me. I'm seeing a number of people I see plots of darkness over your exams. Some of you, it has started happening to you. And there are things we must settle right now for you to write a meaningful exam. Some of you are getting into malpractice because of this pressure. Lift your hands. You study and you don't understand. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to start speaking. Not everybody, but there are specific people that the hand of God will locate them. I see academic chains. Chains. You are not dull. 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 Lift your hands. Father, in the name I see fire bursting busting across the congregation everyone under any academic spell help them please in the name of the lord jesus christ at the count of three as you shout that name jesus you will feel fire it will be on your hands 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 one two 
Release them. Release them now. Release them now. Release the academics now. Release the academics now. Of visitation has come. Come. She braduce kete baladabash. Are you friends or sisters or something? You are sisters. Because I saw the same thing happening to you, happening to her. There is witchcraft in your family. And if that thing is not broken, who is married among you? You are married. Where's your husband, madam? He's at home. I need to pray for you. Hi, this, this is evil. Ah! If I don't pray for you, well, it's not it's a personal thing, but I need to pray for you so that you will not start having problems in your home. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? I must pray for you. Number two, God wants to bring prosperity to your family. Huh? Look at me. This is the biggest desire of you and your husband. Is that true? As you are standing like this, you are, you are suffering. Things are not even working well because there is witchcraft. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. My sister, look at me. four major things that are going to happen to your life between now and December after I pray for you I'm not going to say them now but God will surprise you he's going to shock you because you are a nice person but you see what is stopping your progress in life is witchcraft I don't know if before now you believe that witchcraft exists or not but if you don't please believe it because you will see what will happen Father in the name of Jesus I curse the power of witchcraft I stretch my hands over you and I command it to leave you now I see something like a crown on your head and I command that spirit to leave you. It goes never to return to you. And Father, these four things you have revealed may they happen and let her see it. Madam, look at me. Go and tell your husband November 17th. November 17th is a day of mighty breakthrough for the family. Mighty breakthrough for the family. God bless you. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Hallelujah. Please just give me one or two minutes and then we'll round up. But let me just minister to one person. I'm seeing someone from your 200 level. They have never brought out your complete results till now. Please, who is that person? Either one will be missing or something. This is the sign the Lord is giving me. You, come. You are not the only one. I'm seeing a lady too. Please, don't just come out and be emotional about it. Who are you? You're wearing blue or something like that. Come, come and stand. Hold your hands. Ken, there is witchcraft in your family. And because of the greatness, the greatness that is upon you, you are going to become such a mighty man and a great man. But I see this thing haunting you, haunting you in a very serious way. I see that there is, there is a mantle of wealth and greatness upon your life. But then I've seen this thing happen because I'm seeing that this thing wants to frustrate your academics. Your scripts mysteriously missing. 
who is he that speaks a thing and it will come to pass when the Lord has not declared it I put the word of God upon your life and I declare right now every missing script I don't care where it is I command that the angels of God may they go to the senate may they go to your faculty and bring out your script right now as I speak to you I release their ministry right now I release their ministry right now I pray for two of you look at me the two ladies look at me look at me I'm going to pray for you there's delay serious delay in your family very very serious delay and I'm going to pray all of you have great destinies and the Lord wants to lift you father I pray and I cause witchcraft in the name of Jesus that everything that represents witchcraft I curse it let your scripts be released let your scripts be released right now in the name of the Lord Jesus I declare it I decree it let it be established in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah lift your hands and give Jesus thanks hallelujah like him the lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down every ocean rolls to the Lord our Lord praise Adonai from the rising of the sun to the end of every day, praise Adonai. All the nations of the earth, all the elders and the saints, sing praise. I believe God, though. I'm a man of faith. I believe God. He says, I know whom I have believed. I've seen God help people even in this place. In this place. Brothers and sisters, there is a mystery of lifting. God can take a man. You see somebody today and God can lift that person. He, he, they looked at Saul and said, when did, we can't see the process. When did Saul become a prophet? A man sleeps as a prisoner. But the next afternoon, he is already a prime minister. Oh, don't play with the God we serve. There is a mystery of the lifting of men. That you are about to die after one month. And after koinonia, you are not only alive, you are carrying the healing anointing. Who is this God that can bring speed to a man? I'm not motivating you. I know him. There is a mighty God who can wipe the tears of people. Let me tell you, this night before we pray just take away your mind from anything and everybody don't come to god with your calculation and say lord my prayer request i wrote my uncle he must answer me leave that one let god choose if god wants to use a chair to give you a breakthrough let him give it to you you've not read that god used a bed to bring bread for a man do you think if Elijah had an option, he would choose a bed? Was it not rock that brought water out from people? These things were not done in the spirit. It's just that we truly do not believe God. We think we do, but we don't. There are people who are sick here right now, but may never believe that God can touch them. Listen, don't be so into your challenges that you think tonight God cannot touch you. It's easy to say, okay, God, I'm happy. I, I thank you for what you are doing. No, you must insist. Hallelujah. Luke 18, verse 1. The Bible says, He spake this parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. He said there was an unjust judge. He didn't fear anybody, not God nor man. And there was this poor widow who said, Avenge me, my adversary. And for a long time, the man would not respond. And she kept pestering him. 
when you place a demand with your faith there is enough grace there is enough anointing you can argue this and watch other people stepping into their testimonies but please tonight wherever you are inside and outside don't make it look like you have come to waste your time tonight are we together God has revealed to us that he's coming in as a helper bless you my dear as a helper as a helper this ministry has been helped by the Lord greatly helped by the Lord I think it was last week I was sharing the testimony we don't have the opportunity to share one tenth and by the way I want to challenge you when God blesses you don't keep quiet you return back to where you receive the miracle and let the people of God know that this is what God has done I shared the testimony last week I think it was last week or two weeks ago when Kaduna after a meeting just to have lunch briefly and then rush back and I'm there and then a woman walks up to order a meal too and she's with a little son then I look at this woman and she was looking at me she said are you pastor Joshua I said yes ma and then she greeted me and I said sorry do I know you and she smiled she said I'll tell you a little story she said two years ago she came for counseling as wretched it was like she had come to the end of her life I share this to encourage you hallelujah and um, she said everything was scattering she was a single mom with a child supposedly no hope for marriage nothing was working they were about to throw her out on her job and I prophesied to her and I said they were going to call her back and send her to the marketing department she should not be afraid and she said man of God that's exactly what happened and she looked at me and she said can you imagine what has happened to my life she just put her hand like this and I saw a ring and she said I just got married two months ago and then she said I should look outside and there was a clean E class she said who would believe that in two years I'll be the one owning this my life has changed brothers and sisters if you will believe God can change your life if you will argue he will not argue with you he will leave you to continue until you find enough reasons please I want you to be angry today as we pray and place a demand on the throne of heaven and say Lord you must answer me whenever I call you you will answer me Elijah called on you and you answered him Moses called on you and you answered him that's why I know wherever I call you you will answer me seated here inside and outside in all of the overflows there are people with medical reports that if God does not visit them this night they are dying for sure I bring you a message of hope the helper is in the house there are families here who are in situations that will take a vigil for them to explain because they, the situation is so scattered it doesn't have beginning and end they don't even know where the problem started from they know that they are in the middle of a situation but the helper when he comes he can make every crooked path straight there are people here trusting God for children there are people here trusting God for a turnaround, breakthrough. Do you believe that God is stepping in? The worship team sang so beautiful and they challenged us. Do you believe that God is able to step in? We are going to pray right now. You are not praying for your neighbor. You are not praying on your request. You are going to pray for yourself and say, Lord, please don't let me go back the same way I came. Lift your voice and pray inside and outside. Please pray. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 One more prayer point. The power of God is so strong in this place. I'd like you to say, Lord, visit the foundation of my problem and set me free. Please lift your voice and pray what you think may be the problem 
may not really be the problem. Hallelujah. We're going to sing this song just seven times. And then I'll begin to minister. My goodness. I tell you, God will do extraordinary things in this place. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from, from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting no, 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 no. to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to Talk everlasting. The voices. I will praise him from, from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Praise the miracle walker from who will step into your life. Everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to One more time. Lord, we will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. Madam, let me talk to you, please. Yes. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. It's time for you to rejoice. The Lord is asking me to destroy witchcraft from your life and your family. Because you love the Lord, but there is a lot of oppression in your life. Is that true? Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that he's ending captivity today from your life. Right now, I command that spirit out by the power of the Holy Spirit. I stretch my hand. Something is leaving you. I'm seeing something being removed from your head. That's what I see happening. You will never be the same again. I command it out. By the authority of the kingdom in the name of jesus christ and god is removing something from your stomach too i'm seeing something leaving your stomach like a growth i command it to go now right now right now i will praise him from everlasting everlasting hallelujah everlasting madam check yourself Give her the mic. Check yourself right now. Your stomach area. Check yourself. What is happening? Look at this. Because I saw that there was something. If I don't pray for you, huh? Yes, sir. There's a movement. There's a movement. 
because I'm seeing something later they will tell you it's fibroid. Huh? You are you are even afraid of going to the hospital. The hospital. Yes. Because you think they will tell you it's fibroid. That's really what they would have told you. But today we cancel it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The everlasting to everlasting. Gabriel, I'm hearing the name Gabriel. Gabriel, Gabriel. Please let's save time. Gabriel, you are at that row. You are at the back. That row at the back. You are a gentleman at the back. That row there. Where is the person? Please come out quickly. You are wearing something like brown, brown shirt or something. Is there someone like that? Who is that? Come. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Eh? because I'm seeing another woman your mother is here the Lord is saying I should speak to her light is living from you outside there is a woman outside she's your mother where is she is she here or at, not outside at, at the is he at the edge of the wall or outside some who is that please is she here come mama God is wiping the tears of your family tonight Everlasting to everlasting, Lord, we will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting. Mama, you're welcome. Please stand up. This woman has suffered. I'm looking at this woman and I saw a load on your head that is reaching the roof and she's carrying it alone. Mama, can you hear me? Look at this woman crying. You see, some of you don't know why. God, this is not just showmanship. There are people here just seated close to you if they tell you their stories your own story will look like child's play because this woman has suffered mama you are a good woman but listen listen where where are you are you in zaria here yes, sir. in zaria what do you do I, so, so. I, so, I need to pray because i'm i'm seeing this is a cause i'm a widow sir. i know i'm going to pray for you do you know why i call this boy they want to kill him. That's why I want to pray for him. They caught. He might have they caught. This boy might have they caught. I go yesterday. Yesterday we go. They say, oh, they tell me to come back again. Eh? What caught? He get problem. He might have they caught. If I don't pray for this boy as small as he is, they are going to kill him. Do I know you have a case in the court? Why would we call somebody? Like, don't, don't be afraid, Mama, because... This thing will even cause you problem. Um, young man, I will pray for you. Mommy, look at me. This thing is a curse. Huh? The same way they killed your husband, they want to kill this boy and leave you in misery. Huh? Mama, I'm going to pray for you. There is a God that reveals secrets to men. Because I'm seeing a load right to the roof on your head. You are carrying it alone. I will pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is wiping your tears. I'm seeing a mother outside. The Lord is showing me a mother outside. A woman outside. Uh, it's like you are wearing her tie. But it's not like her tie, same material. Her tie like a normal, this thing. It's, a, it's an elderly woman outside sitting just by this side of the window. Please, I need to speak to her. If there is somebody like that, let's have a mother outside. The Lord is showing me. Mama, I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus for God to change your story. 
I don't know what is in the court, but in the name of Jesus, we will change it. How old are you? You are 14. You will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus. You believe that? Where are you from, Mama? I'm from Edo. You are from where? Old Edo, from Okwela. Where are you from? You are from Edo State. That's what the Lord is telling me. Because the same thing he's delivering two of you from. You see that? Mama, I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is destroying that spirit. Father, I lay my hands on our mommy. The back pain. Look at me, Mama. The back pain you have. It 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 will be healed now. Amen. Hold my hand. Amen. Look at what is happening to her. Mama, shout Jesus loud. Jesus. Father, hold my hands for your glory. Mama, look at me. Look at me. You see something like fire moving at your back right now. That pain is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Do what you couldn't do. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do. Look at, look at, help her, cover her. It will never return to you in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you, my friend. I'm seeing you, but I'm seeing two heads. This is a misidentity. The devil wants to misrepresent you, but I'll pray for you. Huh? Your passion for God. Have good friends. If your friends are not good, leave them this night. May God give you good friends. In the name of Jesus Christ, grace for you. That anointing comes upon you, takes you to a new dimension. This is the woman, Mama, you are welcome. Let's celebrate Jesus. I'll pray for you, but there is another woman I'm talking about. There is another Mama outside who needs to come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus. You have a daughter. Yes. Where is she? She's outside. She's outside. Call her. Come. Daughter, where are you? Please come. Shim. What's her name? Shim. Shim. Please, you had your name rush and come in. Our time is gone. Who is this? I told her to have the one. No. The woman... I'm talking about has her tie um, it's not the same as the material it's not the same as the material she's wearing I'm looking for a head tie that looks close to it ladies now the normal scarf that you carry and tie but I will pray for you anybody that has come out I'll pray for you I don't know why she's here she is, but I'll pray for you you are already out I'll pray for you please let's let me just minister to those that are here I'll pray for you Christ. In the name of Jesus. Please, you can return back to your seat. Let me talk to you. Your daughter? Um, Mama, I'm going to pray for you. The Lord is visiting your family in the name of Jesus Christ. He's visiting your family. And look at me, my dear. God is taking delay from your family. Tell your mother. This is your grandmother, right? Huh? Who is like your mother? She is oh, mine. I see. I, I, oh, I get the story now. Your real mother is dead. Yes. This is your grandmother, but she's like your mother now. Yes. Oh, I see. Because the Lord is saying I should tell your mother, whoever is that, that she's going to lift her. Amen. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Mama, God is lifting you and is wiping your tears. And the Lord is telling me that he's adding years to your life. Yes. Believe me. Who is this? Your what? Sister, but she have um, son and daughter. You have a daughter? She have a daughter, but she's my elder sister. She's your elder sister? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll talk with you. We have to really rush. Mama, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. The God I serve will bless you. He will honor you. What do you do, my dear? I'm a 
students. Where? Maybe you hear. Maybe you hear. I'll pray for you. God is bringing favor upon your life. Look at me. You will really be a blessing to Mama. And make sure you bless her with all your heart. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Bless you, Mama. Come. Come. Two of you. You love Jesus? Are you part of them? Come. You love Jesus? No, you are stubborn. Come. You need to be prayed for. Come. You don't love Jesus. You are, you are very stubborn. But Jesus loves you. You are a stubborn boy. You have bad friends. You don't listen. We have to pray for you. There is a spirit disturbing you. You need to be delivered. Let her go right now. Out! Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands. I command that devil. Hmm? They want to make your sister mad. Eh? What's wrong with her? It's mad, sir. She's mad. Yes, sir. This is madness. She will be free right now. She came here mad. You are joking. This is koinonia. I command that spirit. She's mad. Out! You must go right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Release her hands. Release her hands. Hold me. Hold me. I command that madness. How can a lady like this be mad for God's sake? I command that spirit. They must leave you right now. In the name of Jesus. I set you free. By the spirit of the Christ. Jesus, for your mercy, for your glory. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. This lady is not just mad. This was supposed to be an initiation. Hold on, please. This is a serious issue. This is supposed to be an initiation into the occult. This is not just mad, like occult, fly. This is occult. An occultic thing. It's not just madness. And you, if they don't pray, you don't listen, you are small, but God will help you, eh? Don't be angry. You have to leave your bad friends. You hear me? If not soon now, you start taking a, what's that thing, that cough syrup? Huh? You hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Please. Don't be embarrassed. We are not, we are not here to embarrass people. You get what I'm saying? We are not here to embarrass people. I have to pray for you. What do you do? Um, I'm bad being in Sokoto. Eh? I'm staying with my elbow at in Sokoto. No, that's not what you are doing. Hold on. Why am I seeing a clipper? I'm bad being in Sokoto. You say you are staying with your brother. I'm seeing a clipper. Come. You two, two of you, God needs to help you. You are a good boy, but there, there's bad influence around your life. God even needs to visit your brother in Sokoto. Eh? You believe what I'm telling you? Yes, you came from Sokoto? Yes, sir. All the way? Yes, sir. This one, where did he come from? He's staying with my mom here. Yeah. He's staying with your mom. Is your mom here? No, sir. She's not here. I have to pray for you. Huh? Um, when, I'm, when I make the altar call, I'll make the altar call. Once you just hear the altar call, just run and come out. Hmm? It's time to be very serious. Jesus Christ will help you. You are a great person. Huh? You are a great person. You don't have any business doing what you are doing. Now, what took you to Sokoto? I went to school. Are you a student? Yes, I have not gotten to admission yet. Your school is not Sokoto. Come back. Don't think somebody will manipulate you and do wrongs for you to get this and that because what you want to do is not very good. Eh? It's not a godly thing you want to do to get admission. Let's do things correctly. Huh? What do you want to study? Computer science. This is not computer science. I'm seeing IT. Something that has to do with, with IT. And God will bless you, but you need to settle down. Because the way you are desperate for admission now, you can you do everything. Have you written jam? Um, you are writing jam. On Tuesday. Huh? Tuesday. Well, I won't say it here. Be careful. Just be careful. You hear what I'm saying, Abi? You know what I'm saying. Yes, be careful. Eh? Because you can't want God to help you. And you're already doing a range. You know what I'm saying now? All these funny things people do for jam. What is not your own is not your own. I'm not embarrassing you. 
the Lord will step in and the Lord will bless you. Just hold that lady and let me minister to you. Who is this? Please, if I don't, yes, Mama, Mama, come. Please, if I don't call you, you don't come out. Mama, I want to pray for you. You do business. Because you are supposed to do, there is business that God has been putting in your heart. Huh? Is that true? God, I see you do business. What you are getting from civil service is not enough to take care of you. And God wants to open a door for you. A business door. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to pray for you because God wants to really give you prosperity this year. Okay, thank you. Regina, Regina. I hear a name, Regina. Regina, Lord, in the name of Jesus, step into our mother's life. Do a miracle for her right now in the name of Jesus. I hear a name, Regina. Regina. Please, who is that? Do we have anybody? Outside, Regina. You are outside. There's nobody. We just move to the next case. You are Regina. Come, what do you do? I'm a saloonist. You are a saloonist. I need to pray. Bad luck. God wants to take away bad luck from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's marriage was cancelled. Come out, please. Your marriage. Who is that? No, not you. Somebody's marriage. I'll pray for you. Don't worry. You were supposed to. You've even started the arrangement. They just cancelled it like this. And your heart is pain. Please come out. I want to pray for you. Let's just flow as the Holy Spirit is giving us grace. You are Regina. In the name of Jesus, God is giving you favor. Please don't sit back. This is a serious issue. In the name of Jesus. I lay hands on you. Please go back. I don't have to speak over your life. Once I lay hands on you. What do you do? I just graduated. Eh? Graduated from school. You just graduated? I have to pray for you. Because you love God. Yes, sir. mind is who is supposed to they've started your marriage planning please come my sister I, I don't mean to embarrass you you get what I'm saying is to speak over your life you too what category are you here for huh? Regina okay I'll pray for you who has sickle cell See, there's a sickler here now you are the one please indicate eh? come come Hold my hands. Look at me. Father, please do a miracle for this lady. You have changed several genotypes in this place. Change her genotype right now. In the name of Jesus. From SS to AA. Do it for her in the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, let me pr please. Um, are you based in Zaria here? Are you part of our prayer department? Yes, sir. Please be serious eh? and pray because uh, it's not just prayer department. After Koinonia, you can meet the media and listen to the messages. They will help you. You love Jesus, but your mindset is still very serious and you can do anything, especially men. So please, you will listen to that message and the Lord will help you. Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, come. I don't know what happened. I don't want to ask you. Please don't feel embarrassed. Huh? When do you want to settle down? It was supposed to be December last year. It was supposed to be December last year. What happened? He called me and said I should forget about everything. The guy called you and just told you he's not doing it again. Yes, sir. Did he give you a reason why? No reason. Okay, let me tell you. Weep not. God saved you from heartache. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please. See, let me tell you, if you don't have the eyes of the spirit, you will be fighting God not knowing. Are we together now? I'm sorry to say, don't feel bad, don't feel embarrassed. You see that guy? It was three of you. You are not the only one. You have been sensing that there's another lady. The other lady promised to do him something if he doesn't leave you. That's why he quietly called out of fear and all of that. 
that he's, he may be a sincere person but him and women is even a spirit he needs help let me pray for you that God will bring the man he has destined you're a very nice lady father in the name of Jesus Christ I lay my hands upon her father send into her life the man a, a responsible and God-fearing man in the name of Jesus Christ and for your shame may my God give you double in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen let me just talk to two people and then we'll... madam please come that woman can I talk to you please clear the way for her madam please come please let's pray go ahead and pray pray in the spirit say father visit me madam please look at me I have to pray for you something is tying your finances down completely yes sir. that's the major reason why you came yes sir. is that true yes, you were asking the lord to visit your finances yes, because everybody will see you now and think things are just working but the truth is nothing is really working yes, sir. you need a serious miracle in that area that's true, sir. is that true yes sir. are you married yes but now i'm out of hold on place. don't worry you just answer you don't have to embarrass yourself because there is a spirit huh this spirit brings bad luck on your life People come to you and then in a few weeks or months, they will now fight you. This is still what happened in your marriage. It's true, sir. Because the man has gone. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, is that true? Are you in your yes, husband's house now? No, sir. You are not in your husband's house. The Lord is bringing a miracle for you. Amen. What do you do? I'm a hairdresser. You are? Hairdresser. Do you believe in tithing? Yes, sir. You tithe? No. Don't feel embarrassed. This is the one thing the devourer is marching in and out of your life because tithing is not in place. Please believe it. It's not a gimmick by men of God. Is she your friend? Because I'm seeing light from you to her. You know her. Eh? Why have you not been talking to her about tithing? Even last week you discussed with her. No, 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 don't feel bad. Madam, please, look at me. Tithing is not a gimmick by men of God. Believe me. You understand what I'm saying? It's the access point the devil is using. Where is your husband, the man now? He's at home now. Has he married another one? You want to get I will discuss with you, eh, madam. This is not something we will say in public. It's a very serious issue. But I need to pray for you. But for now, I need to pray for you. There is bad luck. And we need to pray against it. Please don't feel bad. God is about to change your life. Please hold my hands. In the name of Jesus. I command that spirit. See, there is a spirit that is making this thing happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go. Release her right now. That spirit leaves you. Madam, go and prosper. You will prosper in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Um, there's a baby that is sick. I have to pray for that baby. I'm seeing a baby that is very sick. Very small baby. Sick. Your child? Is she sick? Yes, sir. What's wrong with her? She's having difficulties in breathing. Difficult in breathing. Difficulty in breathing. How old is the baby? It's five months. Five months. This is not the only baby. There's another one. Come, come. I'll pray with you. What did the doctors tell you about the baby? Syndrome. They said it's what? That is Down syndrome patient. Down syndrome? Yes, sir. We soon need doctor. Ah, you are a doctor now. Down syndrome. At least I know I don't know what causes it, but I know how it does. Please come, come, come and talk to us. Give us some little education. Let's cast this. Um, it's a congenital disorder. And the difficulty in breathing is most likely coming from a congenital heart disease. It mostly manifests with congenital heart disease. 
then there are other um, manifestations too. From the fishy, you can um, see some of the manifestations also. I don't know what you said, but all but I know. <laughs> most likely, the difficulty in breathing is coming from a congenital heart disease. We're going to pray. This, this baby... believe that this child ah god do a miracle in the name of jesus hold him am i holding him right in the name of jesus christ father by the blood of jesus do a miracle in this child we change this situation in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit let there be a miracle in jesus name I'm seeing one more child though. Who is that? Please come. Please hold the child. You are the one who needs the healing first. Just hold the child. I hope the child will not cry. I have to pray for you. Huh? Something is really fighting you. Huh? This is witchcraft. Let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command you, you know my voice. In the name of Jesus, she's been translated from the kingdom of darkness into light. And you must let her go. I'm seeing this lady in the realm of the spirit like a tree. That is, is refused from moving. Hold my hands. You must be free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those dreams, those oppressions, I come against them in Jesus' name. Let's pray for the baby. What's wrong with the baby? She has been coughing and stooling. Coughing and stooling. Baby, how are you? In the name of Jesus Christ, we speak to you. No more coughing. In the name of Jesus Christ, perfection in your body. I release the power of the Holy Spirit upon you. Right now, in the name of Jesus. The power flows through this baby. Jesus name I hope the usher help out because I'm sensing this anointing even on her in the name of Jesus Christ baby we take away everything that is not of God in the name of Jesus Christ look at me where is the man in your life one of the okay I'll pray with you in the name of Jesus I'm seeing something that is serious but I'll talk I'll talk about it okay the Lord is showing me something that is quite serious. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. There are 13 people here. There is a strong influence of confusion and stagnation. Please listen. 13 people here right now inside and outside i'm going to pray for you right now wherever you are as i begin to pray it's like fire it will come upon you confusion stagnation at least 13 people i see in the spirit please lift your hands don't say anything just lift your hands i'll do the prayer let's just flow the way the holy spirit is praying. lord jesus i'm praying right now by the ministry of angels 13 people by the influence of the spirit i stand under this apostolic anointing and i pray right now wherever you are inside and outside right now as i pray that fire starts coming upon them right now right now bring them out 13 people 13 people by the power of the Holy Spirit. I end it right now. There are still people outside, inside. That same people. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Bring them out please. Right to the back. Right to the back. Right to the back. Right to the back. I'm seeing fire. 
it's like a spirit that will jump out of you right to the back inside outside i command that confusion outside the anointing of the holy ghost is resting on people confusion all the overflows in the name of jesus confusion must come to an end right now delay lift your hands i tell you there will be a mighty baptism outside outside at the count of three i want you to shout jesus when you shout it i see altars on fire are you ready now outside one two three bring them bring them fire is falling outside the bible says while men slept hear me there are things that tie the destinies of men jesus already paid the price that's why we are doing what we are doing the authority is that of jesus christ bring them in now listen listen my goodness you're going to lift your hands for your family i see the angels of the lord bringing deliverance for families listen at the count of three i tell you wherever you are i like you to shout jesus with all your heart some of you you are representing an altar of god for your family and the moment you do that in the name of jesus there will be a miracle one father for families let the soul of the spirit go from the north to the south east and the west of every family right now at the count of three one two three families 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 the sword of judgment Pray, pray. Make sure you're praying. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Now those outside listen. I came out because your destiny must open up. Lift your hands. I came out to bring the atmosphere of God's presence. Hear me. There is no one here whose destiny has been tied that that spirit will remain i'm going to, listen i'm going to begin to walk around my goodness i see angels by my left and right as i begin to move across this place the fire of god will start falling right now i stand under this apostolic office and i declare my hands right now right now right now i command us right now right now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus fire 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 every spirit every devil from my left my right outside outside my left my right every devil right now i stretch my hands every spirit go 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 i command every spirit right now release them release them right now release them release them 
Alléluia. 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 Those of you here, lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm going to shout Jesus just two times. And I see like a tornado. It's like the spirit will start moving right to the back. That's what the Lord is saying. I should shout. There are spirits dying men. It's your time to go now. Jesus. Get ready now. Get ready now. Jesus. Go, go, go out. Out right now. My left and my right. I release spirit. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Those spirits. I command them to leave. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Out, 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 out. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I command right now, right now. I stretch my hands towards you. Every force tying you down. In the name of Jesus. It must release you right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now listen. Those of you outside don't think you are missing anything at all. That's why I came out. I'm going to all the overflows. Those of us here. You may be outside. But let me tell you something. God will step into your destiny. Please lift your hands. Because I'm seeing chains from where this camera is right to the end. I'm seeing chains. Lift your hands. I want you to shout Jesus just once at the count of three. And everybody under that influence must go right now. Please be careful with anybody close to you so that you don't stampede them. Father, I chains of bondage. But you organize this meeting to recover destinies. Therefore, at the count of three, it will come like fire on some of you. One two three right now right now right now right now right now right now i cast that spirit i cast that spirit i cast that spirit let that go right now in the name of jesus 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 in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is giving you a new song, a new song. The Lord is wiping your tears. You on green, lift your hands. Take it now. Receive right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Mama, the Lord is saying I should tell you he's wiping your tears. God is wiping your tears. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is saying what you could not do in five years, you mama, in five years, he's making to happen for you in one year. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sir, I have to pray, there's delay in your life. The Lord wants me to break the spirit of delay. I hope you are not embarrassed, sir. No. Hold my hand, sir. Something will happen to you remarkably right now. Take it! That devil of delay. Out of his life right now. Out! Out! I don't know who this man is, but he's stepping into a new level. God is wiping the spirit of delay. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing in the spirit a name, Eboyi. Eboyi State. Someone here from Eboyi State. God is bringing a miracle at my back. That person is at my back. A boy in state. God is bringing a miracle wherever that person is. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is Margaret? Margaret. I'm hearing the name Margaret. You are in this place. Oh, no, 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 no. There's a lady here, Margaret. I'm seeing the Lord is shining. Who is that? Come, Margaret. You are Margaret. Look at me. The Lord is wiping the tears of your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that spirit to leave your family right now. I see a family of five ladies. None is married. A family of five ladies. The Lord is showing me. Five ladies. None is married. None is married. He's on the wheelchair. How long have you been? Seven years. What happened to you? You were shot. 
Oh, you're a military personnel. Yes, sir. And you've had to leave the army because of it. Or you're still there. Still the but then you need to work. Yes, sir. Wow. You can't feel. No, I cannot feel. You can't feel this leg right it's now. A spinal cord injury. Oh, it's a spinal cord. A lumbar problem. Yes, sir. I'll pray with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a family of five ladies. Please. I have to talk. Five ladies. None of them is married. Five ladies. None is married. No one among them is married. God needs to do a miracle. Please make sure that we confirm the situation. Five ladies. So that we don't say yes. we are faking it. Please make sure. Yes, yes. Five ladies. Where yes, are you from? Yes, I'm from Edo State. You are from Edo State? Yes, yes. You two? Five, you two? You are together? Oh, you are his sister? No. You are his friend? So why are you here with him? To back him up? Oh, five ladies, yes. Okay. Okay, I'm going to pray for you right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit. There is a spirit that brings delay in your family. And I take authority over that spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right now. There's somebody around here. You are into book selling. Bookstore business. God wants to increase somebody's bookstore business. Here. I'm sensing it. I don't know if there's anybody here. You are into selling of books. The Lord is saying prophesy increase to that person. Jordan is you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Jordan. You step into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Ah, but you are not related to him. You just came out. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for the people here. I hope they can hear me. Hallelujah. There's somebody I need to pray for here. Call that lady. Call that lady. You. Don't think distance is a barrier. Believe me. God can fish you out from anywhere. Look at me. I know you are standing by the fence, but God is wiping your tears. He's giving you a new song. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I release that anointing upon you. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. God has answered your prayer. You are praying that I minister to you. You and your friend. Where is your friend? Where is he? Lift up your hands, two of you. You will step into an anointing. Huh? Hold your hands together. In the name of Jesus. Look, I stretch my hands. Right now, let a fire come upon both of you. Right now, right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You step into a strange dimension. Let me talk to the people here. I want everybody to be able to know that when you come for this meeting, it doesn't matter where you are. God can visit you. No, don't worry, just, just leave the person. Grace. I hear a name, Grace. 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 There's someone with the name Grace. Is there someone like that? Grace. Grace. I need to pray for Grace. 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 And I'm hearing Garba. Garba. I'm hearing a name, Garba. God is ministering to somebody. I don't know if it's a son name or a name Garba. In the name of Jesus. Garba, where are you? Your name is Garba. Your son name is Garba. Where is your dad? He's outside. He's in Saudi Arabia. He's, a, he's, he's in Saudi Arabia. Because I'm seeing God is saying, look at me. God is saying I should tell you that there's going to be increase for your family. Okay. And it's, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. You have to be very serious with me. You are going to be very wealthy. You are going into oil and gas. Are you hearing me? I don't know you. I don't know anything about you. But I'm seeing that you are going into oil and gas. And God is going to honor you. God will bring a man into your life. Bless you. I'm seeing three people here. You are writing jam next week. Jam. No, no, not everybody. Hold on, hold on. Just relax. I'm going to pray for everybody. Here, where I'm standing. You are writing jam. Three people. Right in jam. Somebody is writing it for the fourth time. That person, you are the one.
this will be the last time do you know me come, come and stand what please remind me in case i forget this jam thing we have to settle it once and for all please people are writing this thing again and again i cost that spirit this overflow these ones looking at me please lift your hands not these ones those ones exactly please lift your hands please don't think that because of the distance all right god cannot touch you there is a reason why i'm coming out with this because sometimes inside is just a fraction of those outside and i want you to feel a sense of belonging to know that god is able to visit you and to minister to you hallelujah those outside here there are at least two of you fire is coming upon you right now i see the power of darkness being broken lord where are they right now i stretch hands in the name of jesus christ i stand upon this anointing wherever they are Father, there is a lady right now it's like fire is coming upon you right now right now right now in the name of jesus christ that fire is coming upon you all of you standing here i prophesy to you in the name that is above all names hear me whatever has tied your progress i'm talking to those here i stand under this anointing and i declare a change of story right now benway state there's someone here from benway benway um benway state you have an elder brother Please make sure that you don't come out. We are not faking this thing. Please, you have another brother. Where? I'm going to pray for you. God is visiting your family. Visiting your family in strange ways. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that if you seek him with all your heart, he will surprise you. I hear what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. By the power of the holy spirit i'm seeing a lot of families here under financial stagnation and the lord is saying release them in the name of the lord jesus christ please listen listen please believe what i'm saying don't come and waste your time god brought you here to wipe your tears any family here you have tried and tried and tried doors have refused to open i open it for you now in the name of jesus christ i see somebody here you are looking for a job june um, you are looking for a job in abuja by june i see a job coming this is what god is saying i don't know who i'm speaking but god is meaning somebody your name is grace where is your mother Kogiste. i need to pray for you because there's wisdom I take authority over that spirit of Jesus. I need to pray for somebody, two of you. I want you to follow me. You smoke this thing. Uh, what's the name of that? It's not just stab out. Weed. Please, don't be embarrassed. Two of you, you really smoke it. You love the Lord, but this thing is a challenge. Please follow me. Your deliverance has come. You smoke weed. Your own is not just... Uh, all that cigarette please don't be embarrassed follow me and i'll i'll pray for you and brother here listen listen god is speaking to you you came for koinonia but you left a lady in your room you left a lady in your room you told her you are coming for koinonia and you will come back please don't destroy yourself and destroy that lady because your going back now is to get that lady pregnant and you'll be in trouble. God is saving you. Send her a text now to go home. You are born again. Once I make altar call, wherever you are, please march to the front in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The power of God is coming on some ladies here. I've seen in some at least three ladies severe menstrual pain this is not this is something that for one of you is in your family lift your hands please just here this region right now the fire of god is going to come on some ladies i take authority over that spirit right now in the name of jesus christ right now right now i cause that spirit in the name of jesus christ a lady will feel like fire on her stomach right now 
it will come upon you like fire i take authority over it right now in the name of jesus christ and there is a lady that the lord is showing me for four months you have not seen your period four months you have not seen your period i think you need to talk to your friend to help you because before the end of this meeting is returning in the name of jesus christ i see someone's family um like relative in prison there's somebody here like that in prison one of your relatives i don't know if he's in a police station or prison something like that god is doing a miracle who is that there's somebody like that you're the one come who is in prison your nephew are you sure oh which prison God. is in gobe state you know how long is his tenure uh, five, years. You know five years how many years has he done know. one one year we are going to pray for mercy you will not reach five years we are going to bring him out you believe that oh yes. lift your hands for him God. and let the name of jesus step in and give him you know the mighty name of jesus lift your hands my dear look at me i'm seeing a crown being put on your head you this hearing me god is bringing you into a new dimension of grace father i stretch my hands to her right now right now that fire comes upon you right now in the name of jesus let me talk to the lady with the pink cap you lift your hands beauty for ashes that's what god is saying is bringing beauty for ashes in the name of jesus christ God is bringing a restoration to your family. Your family is experiencing a restoration. In the name of Jesus. Joseph. Joseph, I hear you. Joseph. Joseph, you are wearing a short dress. Joseph, you are wearing a short dress. Joseph. I'll pray for you, but the Joseph is inside the house here. Who is that? Come out. Your name is Joseph. I will pray for you. God wants to lift you. Lift your hands. Something will come on you. You are a student. You are a papa. God is white. In the name of Jesus Christ, a new dimension of grace. You are Joseph. Look at me. What are you studying? Are you a student? You are done with German. What do you want to study? Agri. You are going to be a businessman. And God is going to honor you. In the name of Jesus. Joseph John. Where is he? Come. Why did you stop doing business? There is an anointing for you. Go back and the Lord will honor you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come. Where is your mother? Where is the village? The Lord is saying, I should tell you, the way he would lift you, all those who know you will be surprised. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord would lift you. Eh? Because I'm seeing your story similar to that of Esther in the Bible. Go and read the story of Esther. How that God can pick somebody who is supposedly nothing. Someone's sister here is married. Who is that person? Barren, the Lord is saying it's time for the child. I will praise you. Not you or your sister. And I will your praise sister is barren. You. How many years? Six years. You follow me. How, how many years? I will Eleven years. Two of you come. The Lord is responding. You too. Please follow me. Madam, look at me. Confusion is ending in your life. Come. Come. the Lord is bringing an end to confusion in the name of Jesus Christ please everyone lift your voice and pray and say father you are changing my story there is a habit God is setting you free from it's a terrible habit right now be free it's not a habit you should practice at all God is setting you free from it somebody here has eye problem no 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 not eye there's somebody here with eye problem. Your eye pains you if you see light. 
who is that person? I'm gonna put status is changing. I'll no more deny. You get discouraged easily. God was saying that you should be better not be discouraged. Who is the person, please? Lay your hands on your hands. Status is changing. No more I'm on my way to better days. No more The Lord is bringing you to a new dimension. I'm on my way to better I'm on my way. Scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone Hallelujah. says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditates day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit okay, that notification on, bell to receive message. more updates from Please. us because I'm we know that whatever content here Marinous is going to set you on course at every it time. Right it's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Tonight Thank I you. Want God to step into people's lives. I think you should honor what Jesus is doing in this place. Look at the number of issues. Believe me, when I tell you there will be testimonies. If you are standing here for yourself, just move this way. If you are standing for yourself, move this way, please. So that I know. Please, just move here. I will worship him forever. Love him forever. Because this is God. This, this way, just let there be a separation. My, my brothers and sisters, please see how many people the devil is tying down. The Lord is bringing you into an anointing. It's a healing anointing that is coming on you. I see an angel of the Lord pouring like oil upon your head. You, you looking at me something has been activated in your spirit man step into that oil that fountain is that healing anointing koinonia please i want you to know that this is a platform that god has created to wipe the tears of men as we gather there every week god is doing something please be patient with god tonight and let him do something in your life because I have to pray for the sick. I'm only going to lay hands on those who are standing here for themselves. Because I want them to return with the testimony. But for all of us who are connecting for other people. You, lift your hands. You, out! Right now! Right now! It's a curse upon the family. You are going by the spirit of the living God. Right now, you are a devil of darkness. I see you in the spirit and there must be that release right now. Please, those of us here, talk to the Lord on behalf of your loved ones and say, Lord, you must change your story. You must change your story. Those of us here, I'm going to lay hands on you by you. Please pray. Thank you, Jesus. All right, lift your hands, everyone, here. This category, just lift your hands, please. For time's sake, I may not be able to lay hands on you, but I want you to believe. 
something is happening to you that is happening to your loved ones you need to call them and believe many of you are receiving for your loved ones my goodness i hear the cry of children father in the name of jesus christ let there be a miracle right now right now right now right now right now receive it for your loved ones receive it right now i open wombs i open wombs i open wombs in the name of jesus i open wombs i command a remembrance a remembrance right now in the name of jesus right here we declare miracle children for your loved ones miracle children they take in right now and nine months after now they give birth to their children in the name of jesus hallelujah please go back to your seat god bless you god bless you those who are standing here i'm going to pray for you please make sure you are married if you are not married please don't embarrass yourself go back to your seat praise the lord let me pray for those who are standing for themselves we have to pray that's why you came hallelujah remember the testimony that god gave a woman who had been barren for eight years how many years eight solid years and god gave her triplets they are still alive till today triplets triplets please i want you to believe god if you are standing husband and wife no problem you are standing for your wife no problem just make sure you are married that's the only thing we are saying please i'm going to pray for you stretch your hands over them and pray because we will release fruitfulness right now in the name of jesus i don't care what the problem is jesus is stepping in my confidence the source of my strength are you the strength of my life are you my hope and my joy are you hey, my confidence are you Looked around and I suddenly realized that you've been so good to me. Your, Your mercy is everlasting, undenying, overwhelming. I tell you, celebrate God because this will end. Who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you hear my call when I call you? Who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you hear my call? The source of my strength are you. The strength of my life are you. My hope and my joy are you. Yeah, my confidence are you. The source of my strength are you. The strength of my life are you my up and my joy my confidence hey, I exalt you oh God I exalt I release this miracle madam go and return back with your child in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus let this womb be open in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus let there be a miracle in the name of Jesus madam you are coming back with a testimony what is there has been removed in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord wipes your tears right now in the name of Jesus where is your husband sir please stand near your wife there's a reason why the Lord is asking can you hold her hands hold on I don't care what the doctors say you are returning with your testimony
the Lord is giving you a baby girl and then a baby boy. I know you want a boy, but God is giving you a baby girl first and then a boy in the name of Jesus. Make sure you come and testify. God bless you. In the name of Jesus, a miracle, a miracle. But there are still three more cases we'll deal with very fast. We'll pray for this just for one minute and then I'll begin to prophesy. There are people who have not yet received what they came for here. Please, just be patient with us. Please, this is a miracle service, right? So that we can justify our coming. Please, let's rise. We'll just do this in one minute. I'd like you to believe. Stretch your hands here right now. Stretch your hands in one minute and let's pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands towards the prayer request and let's pray. Prophesy over it. Your request is here. Lord, we turn it into a testimony. Please make sure those outside their requests are here too. If they are here to collect your request, just wave it inside and outside and somebody will come and attend to you. Are you praying? Prophesy. Father, this must become a testimony in my life. This must become a testimony in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you answer prayers in this place. Shebaka rota supra di rebosh. Let there be miracles, oh God. Let there be breakthroughs, oh God. Supernatural miracles. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Miracles. Upon miracles. Miracles. Visit everyone. Visit issues of concern. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 I prophesy over this request in the name that is above all names. That every request represented here, no matter how impossible it is, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, let every dead situation here come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, my God, we sang that you are not a man. Turn every captivity here. Turn every captivity here. In the name of Jesus. Now, I want to prophesy to us. Please lift your hands. Um, you don't have to bring them out. It will be... Just give me 10 more minutes, but it's going to be extensive prophecy. Extensive prophecy. I want to speak to you because... I know the things that I see things in the spirit that have not yet been received. We have to pray in the name of Jesus. Please, I want you to believe God and lift your hands. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. The Lord is starting off with direction. There are people here who came praying, Lord, what is the next step of my destiny? Wherever you are, I'm prophesying to you. As I speak, fire will come upon you just on your head. Some of you will start feeling fiery sensations on your ears. The Lord is bringing direction right now. I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Right now. Right now. Supernatural direction. Help that guy. In the name of Jesus. Every confusion in your life. Those outside, make sure you participate. Someone is asking, oh God. What is the next step? I pray by this anointing, receive direction right now. Receive direction right now. In the name of Jesus. Someone's marital destiny is under siege. Right now, in the name that is above all names. An anointing, a yoke breaker anointing. I prophesy, receive it right now. I open those doors right now. Inside, outside. I open those doors right now. Hallelujah. There's someone praying. 
you are asking God for money for rent. Rent. The Lord is telling me that between now and Monday morning, there is a miracle coming for you. There is a miracle coming for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are ladies who have, even guys, this spell of disfavor. Please listen. In the name of Jesus, you will literally feel like something being wiped out of your face. I see many people being affected by this. Lord, where are they? That mark of disfavor. By this anointing. Right now. Right now. I break that mark. Right now. Inside, outside. In the name of Jesus. I tear off that mark. Kaparataka Latoshia. That mark of disfavor. That embargo of bad luck. Upon your life. That makes things not to work. I come against it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. You have come to the end of your road. And if God does not step in, there will not be any way out. I pray for you. That door closed over your destiny. That will not allow you to move to the next level. I stand under this anointing in this miracle service and I prophesy. I command that door to open right now. Oh, come on. Believe it. Believe it. I command that door to open. Shakatata. Deke poroso bariata. I command that door to open. Swing open. In the name of Jesus. Whatever has been emerged from heaven to enter your hand, and is yet to enter your hand. Please stretch your hands towards me. Shala Kataya. In the name that is above all names. I stretch my hands back. Receive it right now. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it right now. Everything that must enter your hand. Inside and outside. I command it. From the realm of the spirit. I deliver it to your hands. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything that has refused to grow in your hand, ideas, businesses, please listen. Everything that has refused to grow in the name that is above all names, return and cause it to grow. Return and cause it to grow. I command that business grow. I command your family grow. I command your finances grow. I command your ministry grow. Hallelujah. I pray for you. You hear me pray this all the time. Because I've seen what it can do in the life of a man. Where are your destiny helpers? If there is one prayer you must receive in this place, listen, God can use men to help a man. And in one day, God can bring the right people to wipe your tears. Lift your hands in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Where you have struggled and struggled with no hope of help. As you lift your hands, let an anointing from heaven land upon your life and call helpers right now right now right now i release that anointing upon you for help for help for help for help take it receive it the anointing listen all you need in your life one person can just tell you do a b c or i know a who can do b for you and it can open you up to a whole new world. One more time I pray. I call them. From the north. The south. If they are in Zaria here. We call them. If they are in Kaduna state. We call them. Any part of Nigeria. Receive their ministry now. Receive their ministry now.
whoever has vowed to destroy your life i'm praying oh this is judgment in the name that is above all names if there is any human entity standing i declare let this night be a night of judgment let this night be a night of judgment let this night be a night of judgment listen when pharaoh refused to allow egypt israel go god took his firstborn whatever must be taken from your enemy to let you go we take it tonight in the name of jesus hear me let me tell you the truth there are men that hold the destinies of people low i teach you principles of success but i'm spiritual enough to know a man's destiny can be kept at a standstill whoever kept your destiny at a standstill in the name that is above all names i put an anointing upon you go forward go forward go forward go forward go forward in the name of jesus go forward i prophesy in your career go forward in every area of your life hallelujah let me speak over our finances you see what is happening around the nation father we believe in the power to prosper and we believe in favor ah there is such a thing my brother and my sister called favor lift your hands my god and my king that anointing for favor that was on joseph that anointing that made five loaves and two fish to feed five thousand people wherever you are may that anointing come on your life right now it's coming on people may that anointing come upon you it comes upon you right now hallelujah some of us are moving but our pace is too slow that's the truth we need acceleration we are moving but your pace is too slow there are things you should do in two weeks not three years there are things you should do in one day i'm praying for you the bible says and the hand of god came upon elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of ahab down to jezreel the anointing that must come upon you that between now and next month miracle service what has not happened from when koinonia started may the god that i serve release it into your life i command speed 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 i prophesy it speed hallelujah all those writing jam lift your hands it's time for you to move forward if you are not writing you can stand in for somebody maybe your loved ones or whatever in the name of jesus the bible says and when they were tested in all matters of wisdom hear me daniel was found 10 times better that 10 times better unction as you write your jam may the angel of wisdom cause you to pass this jam in the name of jesus There are people who suffer and read and sit there in front of that computer and don't know what to do. You will know what to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm led to pray for those in final year. I don't know why, but the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. We need to release you. There are things that have come up. Some of us, physically speaking, is obvious there is trouble. Where is that God who can correct a man's mistake? I pray for you. In the name that is above all names, you will graduate this year. I said you will graduate this year. I don't know how it will happen, but you must graduate this year. Hallelujah. The secret, receive this, two more and we are done. The secret 
the ideas the strategy you need for the next level of your life i'm praying for you please lift your hands there will be a strong impartation god is releasing anointings for creativity some of it will come upon you you will not know why but when you sleep you will see it in dreams my god i'm praying i see this thing falling on at least 40 people in the name that is above all names that anointing for creativity receive it right now right now right now right now an impartation an impartation an impartation an impartation inside outside inside outside take it take it take it creativity ideas i send them from the spirit concepts right now right now business ideas career ideas hallelujah now i'm going to pray the last prayer breakthrough you don't know what breakthrough is some of you let me tell you what breakthrough is breakthrough is when the barrier standing between you and the next level is not lifted destroyed if it's lifted it can appear in your future please listen some of us what you need is breakthrough you don't even know the name of the situation you are in but i pray at the count of three i want everybody to just shout breakthrough as loud as you can and something remarkable will happen i'm seeing rain falling that's what i'm saying father this is the instruction you gave me as we shout hey, yeah, 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 yeah. somebody's husband husband somebody's husband is receiving breakthrough somebody's husband husband at the count of three one two three yes lord receive it receive it receive it malakata bababa breakthrough breakthrough i smash those barriers breakthrough in the name of jesus breakthrough i mark you with an anointing that anywhere they see you they will be compelled to bless you listen to what i'm saying i mark you with an unction i mark you with a mystery and i command that anywhere they see you may they bless you anywhere you enter may this anointing force men to bless you anywhere you travel to may this anointing distinguish you isaac blessed his son and said the smell of my son is like the field brothers and sisters hear me there is a fragrance that can come upon a man that will force men to bless you anyhow i don't know who must appear to bless you but i'm saying it again in the name of jesus i mark you with a mystery that forces men to bless you in the name of jesus in the name of jesus thank you for lifting 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 dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua Salmon. and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like, 
this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye